and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to the Corruptional Podcast here on the 27th of June 2017. A, a date on which a podcast happens, a date on which a podcast is regularly scheduled, a date on which one would usually find a trio of hosts on a show, and yet, alas, somehow that didn't happen. That is going to get so old so fast. <laughs> that fucking <laughs> scrolling text. It's Please tell me you have well. an alternate. Please tell me you have a picture to swap to once that gets super fucking I old. I will, when the time is right, <laughs> when replace I it. Feel when I feel as that it is a podcast emperor total biscuit, when I feel I that am I have shamed him enough, I will swap to uh, probably a picture of a dog. Your dog? Possibly. That's yeah, what that'll be her. Yeah. I told you the tragedy of Darth Jesse the dumb. I thought not. It's not a story the Jedi would tell you. <sighs> Jesse isn't but here I... because he fucking fell asleep on his couch. We were, yeah, he he's jet lagged. We're all jet lagged a little bit. Oh, he's jet lagged. Boo-hoo. Got up, got dressed, sat down on the couch. Passed the fuck out and then woke up and was like, uh, uh, I can't, I, I'm sorry. So we have no Jesse today. Well, to add, to add that to insult to injury, apparently he took all of his headsets and microphones out of his house and put them in the <laughs> office like an idiot. What are the fucking odds? <laughs> it sounds planned. It sounds like planned. an idiot. So thankfully, though, we do have a very special guest. For the show today. I think this may very well be the first game developer that we've had on the show. Ever? Ever. Whoa. I think really? so. That's a lot I'm of pressure. Pretty That's sure. a lot of pressure. Too much pressure. Pretty sure. So. God, really? That's... You better be Mike. good. <laughs> that seems wrong. No. Um, Dan. Hardcastle. He's, a, he's made some games. Or does he not count? He doesn't count really. He's not Dan, Dan does not count. He doesn't count. Yeah, he's, not. he's one of no. your lot, isn't he? Yeah. No. He doesn't count. No. It's like we could say <laughs> we could count too good, but since he hasn't actually released the game yet, it's like this is the person that has released a commercial game that actually sold and sold rel- relatively well. Mr. Mike Bithel, the fellow behind Thomas Was Alone and Volume, welcome to the show. Hello, it's lovely to be here. I mean, I, I, I'll admit I was looking forward to meeting Jesse Cox. Um, Sadly, alas, he apparently was not looking forward to, to meet you. Three, and he didn't like it very much. So no. I think this is whole. I think he's this just avoiding it. me. This is the That's comeback. Yeah. That, nah. That's got to be it, no doubt about I'm, it. I'm willing to go in on that theory. Yep. There's a conspiracy. We could just start it off. Like, there's a beef. There's a professional there's beef. There's beef. This is, this that is could be beef. very good. For this us. is how beef starts. Yes. This is it. I'm calling you out, Jesse Cox. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to throw down? Is there going to be some sort of battle rap going on right here? I mean, Please a tell battle me yes. like Broadway hits. Fights I could probably pull off, but so I think rap might be jet optimistic. Style? Some, yeah, like a. Okay, so we can do that. that. We could yeah. do that. We could do, okay. but I think, I think rap is a bit, bit too uh, not my speed. We'll put no, it no, no, Hamilton. No, no. I could do no. Hamilton. Yes, that's the only rap I know. There you go. Sick. Absolutely, that that would work. That would be great. I, I Hello, don't everybody. Welcome anything. to a very special <laughs> Clockshell podcast episode in which we're going to recreate Hamilton for you. <laughs> <laughs> Except the villain in this one is somehow something. Jesse Cox instead of horrendous racial equality. Inequality. <laughs> As I said, the enemy is not racial equality. Hmm. That is not what I should say no, I don't think... at all under any circumstances. This podcast took a turn very early. Indeed. Very early. Yeah. <laughs> Went full John Tron. Like, <laughs> nope. 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 <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh, dear. Welcome to the Co-Optional Podcast. We occasionally talk about video games, and for those that are upset about the scrolling text, don't worry, because I just replaced it with a picture of beef. There we go. There we go. Yeah, that did lie! The beef has begun. The beef is now official. The beef is real. Yep. This is a picture of beef, which is also educational, because it shows you which part of the cow constitutes which part of the beef. This is ideal. You're gonna Which learn part of the cow do you think Jesse Cox is? <laughs> the yeah, ass the is what he is right yeah. now. <laughs> so the so the top side then. Yeah. yeah yes. I expected yeah. you to say the rump or mm-hmm. the clod. The whatever yes. the clod is. The I didn't clod. know the clod was part it's like of your the wattle. The or whatever. That's like yeah. your yeah your cow double chin. This? Yeah. 
this kind of yeah. I'm oh, don't sorry, don't sorry, look at my claw oh, yeah, yeah. exactly. I've got to <laughs> angle the camera correctly so you can't see my claw it's very embarrassing yeah. Oh dear. I'm very embarrassed. I leave my clod out all the time. <laughs> I'd say at the moment that this is a rib or a thick rib, one way or the other. Oh dear. T H I C C rib. <laughs> thick rib. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Oh. All right. Well, uh, we usually start the show in a way that isn't that. So you've experienced something unique today. Regardless of that, we sometimes talk about video games occasionally. And we're going to be talking about the games that we've been playing this week. That's going to be like the first two hours of the show. Last hour of the show will be a mixture of news and releases. Because, yes, some people actually have the spine to release this week. That's impressive, man. I, I respect that. That's a bold choice. Indeed. There's actually some kind of cool stuff coming out this week, nice. at least on Steam anyway. So we'll be highlighting that towards the end of the show. So, yeah. But that... guys, what makes this week any different from any other week? I don't know, Dodger. What makes this week different from any other week? I don't know. What makes this week different from any other week, Mike? Well, Thomas Was Alone and Volume are both on sale. On Steam. <laughs> I mean, let's get to it, right? Like, let, let's not, let's not, let's not dance. Let's just go right into the shameless plugs. plugging. Let's, yeah. let's go for it. Let's go for it. We do like no, a little bit of shameless plugging on this. I think, show. I think there are some other games in a sale as well, but I honestly, I, I couldn't tell you. But Volume and Thomas was alone about seventy five percent off, which seems like a great deal to me. Yep. Hashtag, yeah. hashtag totally not shilling. <laughs> That's that's always your right. Be always you, be all, actually, I'll always be shilling. Yep. Come, come on. I mean, whenever we have Jesse on the show, he's trying to sell his stuff, but of mm. course he can't do that when he doesn't show up. And don't of, worry. <laughs> I I'll I'll do some shilling gonna, as well. You gonna shill for your so. own products? What you got? <laughs> yeah. What you got? What are you gonna sell us? What's? Oh, uh, Pitch well, it. this Pitch it. our our new shirt. Don't touch my senpai. Is going like to be that. coming out tomorrow. What's a senpai? So, uh, what is a senpai? What well, is a senpai? in like Japanese culture, your senpai is somebody who um, is like right above you. It's not necessarily somebody who's older than you, but it's somebody that you like show reverence to you. that like teaches you. It's like or... a teacher, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. How about teacher with sensei? Teacher is sensei, but it's like, it's, it's like, like a teacher. somebody who's slightly above your peer. They're not quite your peer. They're like a little bit older than you, or they're a little bit more, um, they like more knowledgeable than you are. Somebody that you can learn from. And then you are their kohai. Kohai, that's the word, is it? Well, what's that? Mm. How's that spelled so like I can say that to people? How like can I, to, oh, how's K it spelled in English? K-O-U-H-A-I, kohai, okay. I think. You know, patronize people regularly by using that. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You so, can call any, kohai, anybody kohai who works you for suck. you your kohai, just okay. to like, nice. be weird. That would be weird, but in a good way, I think. I think I'd enjoy it. Yeah, there we go. We've learned something today. This is a very educational show so this far. Is, Your senpai is also deal. somebody that you're obsessed with that you'll murder people for. <laughs> yeah, ah. that's, in, that's the... in current anime weeb culture. <laughs> it's gonna say, and that's the bit that you don't do. Yeah, that's <laughs> that. Don't don't murder people, please. That's... Yeah. So if you would like a shirt that says "Don't touch my senpai" with an adorable little cat who might have murdered who may, somebody, who may murder you, that uh, shirt goes on sale tomorrow. And there's a Japanese word for the person that might murder people as well, isn't it? Which yandere. With, yes, begins with a Y. Yes, yandere. That, that yandere, yandere. Or yandere. as this shirt is called, nyandere. Uh, that was physically painful. <laughs> uh. I'll be here for the entire podcast. <laughs> Let's do this shit. This, this is what happens when you don't have a moderating presence to prevent you from doing this. <laughs> oh, you gave me the floor and I took it. I, di I did and I, I thoroughly regret. I, the hell, the floor regrets. <laughs> it's, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> the floor regrets. That's, some, that's from Game of Thrones, isn't it? I think you can get it on a t-shirt. I think that's... Some like isn't that. that. What Tony, well, that's what Stark always said. Not Tony Stark, that's a different thing. Tony Stark in yes, Game of Thrones the, always says, the floor yeah. regrets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I, I, remember. I, remember, I remember Tony Stark in, in Game of Thrones. It's like, ah, oh, the dragons, don't worry. I am Iron Man. Da, 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 da. We joke, but there's probably like 30 fan mashup t-shirts. There's like, for sure. every no week. way T Fury that, right? has not already sure. done 20 of those sure. yet. It's yeah. like <laughs> T Fury. It might be copyright <laughs> infringement, but you're buying it anyway. 
Also, it feels like wearing wire Buy wool. Buy it before it gets shut down. <laughs> I was going to say, see, Fury, your lawyers aren't fast enough. <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> Literally. This is only up for 12 hours. We're and then you this. can't prove anything. <laughs> yeah. And then we're packing everything up into our giant truck and driving to another state. <laughs> Fuck you. It's modern day caravans, man. God, I just imagine. Just like, Bye. <laughs> I imagine T Fury being like the. The, the rig that you can get in the GTA 5 Gunrunners update, where it's just a giant mobile truck HQ with flat cannons on the top of it. Just, this yeah. is T-Fury. You approach us, we gun you down. <laughs> mm. mm -hmm. All right. Nice. Um, incident, I, I don't even know why I'm saying this, because it won't be helpful to you in any way, but maybe those who are tuning in can communicate it to those who are not. Twitch, about 20 minutes ago, shat itself. So a bunch of streams went down. It looks like a bunch of servers went down. So people wow. are starting to gradually oh. reconnect. We currently do have a good number of people on, but I can't see my own stream. But there are currently 7,000 people that can. I can, so, I can see your stream and your working chat working is me. working. Yes, chat people is in the chat working. are chatting. Yeah, the but I do know that can't Sorry. see it. I was going to say, when we went live, there were people saying, oh, chat's finally working again. So that makes sense now. Yeah, yeah. So Have we ruled out Jesse Cox as the cause of I'm going to assume it is The fault. beef is so real. It's, it's <laughs> there so is real. so much He's beef. He's not here to defend himself. I feel I feel I can take advantage of that fact. Yep. Yeah. Too much beef. How can we say? <laughs> oh, man. Yep. This is going to keep coming up. Uh, so, yeah, if there are if any of your friends... <laughs> have any problems with this show then by all means do feel free to tell them one if they have a problem with the show because i'm on it fuck you but if you're having problems with twitch press f5 see what happens yeah yeah cool welcome to the co-optional podcast we do occasionally talk about video games let's do that mike you're busy tell making it. them but you surely must have some time to play them so tell me what you've been playing this week over the last few weeks what's been going on do you, know what I, do you know what I've been playing? I've been playing um, Wolfenstein, New mm. Order. Because mm -hmm. I, I played it when it came out. And I, need to, I, I keep saying this, I need to go back and check. But something came out like a week after, after Wolfenstein. So I only played like the first like three levels or so. Yeah. And it went on the shelf and got left. For, oh, God, you know, it gets forever. so much better after the first three levels. It's so right? good. This yeah. is what's crazy is I, I saw the, um, you know, I saw the Bethesda press conference. My first Bethesda press conference where I wasn't in the audience, which was weird. I was mm. at home this year. Yeah. Um, and that's just me plug, you know, name dropping the fact that I've been to a Bethesda press conference. Really sad thing to boast about. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so saw the, the new trailer for the new one. I was like, that looks like a really cool game. Like maybe I left too early. And, and so I just put it on like normal difficulty or the one below normal difficulty and just blasted through it over a, just on a sunday yeah and it was really good mm -hmm. like genuinely funny weird i'm a massive like graphic design nerd i'm the rectangle guy so like i'm pretty into my graphic design yeah i, I could got... i could tell that you have extreme artistic talent you know there were some really good squares rectangles in that game very good <laughs> you High, joke the highest but... possible quality you know what Wolfenstein has? It has some amazing rectangles. Like it's got really? good graphic. The graphic design is really solid. It's like this yeah. kind of '60s take on like you know what if what if the Nazis had won the war? Obviously, but yeah. that kind of that '60s vibe mashed up with that kind of mid-century uh, modern design. Like yeah. that's good stuff. Like there's some there's some smart people working on that. So yeah, it was just really good, and I admired it's it. Really and the good. tone was great. Like it was funny, but also like clearly had a point. It you know, was shockingly good. Yeah. good. Like, and the stuff that they showed for Wolfenstein 2 looks like it's right up there as well. I don't think mm. a lot of people expected probably like one of the best actual tastefully handled love stories, like a proper adult yep. love story. Like the way that sex was used in that game is possibly the most mature in any game ever. They just like approached how adults it. form relationships, yes. right? Like, it's like just, these yeah, are actually real legit. people, not mm. ridiculous caricatures, despite the whole scenario being a bit absurd. It's like these are normal, relatable people in an absurd scenario, which made it so strong. Like it I'm not much of a story guy in games. I don't really care. And when it comes to Wolfenstein, I want to dual wield automatic shotguns and murder some Nazis. But I would go back to the base every time just to talk to the characters that were there because they always mm. had interesting things to say. And don't get me wrong, the, the dual wielding machine guns is also solid. Great. Yes, it's weird going back now because I was a big fan of the uh, the Doom game this year, mm -hmm. and and it's weird going back because I remember when I played Wolfenstein the first time around, I was like, this is this is good old school kind of first person shooter. It feels feels like how I remember you know yeah. those games feeling. 
And it's funny going back to it now after playing Doom, because Doom, I'd say, is even more successful at like achieving that proper old school, you know, that the, the good old shooter, shooter trance that you get yeah. into. Yeah, and, and now excellent. when you play Wolfenstein, Wolfenstein almost feels a bit too Call of Duty, like it feels a bit too modern. Yeah. So I'm interested to see what they do with a sequel if they go like right down that Doom path. Mm -hmm. So I know it's a different dev team. I wonder if they'll, I wonder which way they're going to go. Like if they're going to go more the kind of, the, the, basically Morid. playing the yeah. way I remember, even though I definitely didn't play that well when I was younger, versus like a more modern approach. I'm interested. And if, either way, I'll be happy to be honest. Yeah, it's shocking, like the the ability to recapture the feeling of how you felt when you were playing an old school game is something i've been arguing for for a while on the rts front uh, that mm. uh people say oh they don't make rts like they used to and i miss the time when rts wasn't competitive it's like newsflash it was always competitive the shit that's being done in starcraft 2 now not only was it being done in brood war obviously but it was also being done in all the command and conquer games as well like mm. they because I know this because uh, I'll tell you the story of a little event in the UK called Stratlan in Stratford upon Avon. I think I'm going to see. That's why it was called Stratlan. Land of RTS and Shakespeare. Yes, yeah. land of what the fuck is Stratford upon Avon? Well, that's a very <laughs> good question. Uh, it. I went to my first and only Stratlan. Had a, a, a absolute blast. It's run by the same guys that run the Insomnia series in the UK. Oh that yeah, series. yeah, good guys. He, yep, multiplay. They do. They did a smaller one called Stratlan. I went there, and mm. it was. Uh, I don't remember half of it because I got very, very drunk and then threw up in an <laughs> in a local um, private airport car park. Uh, we went to. They have a place Classy. nearby the airport cafe, which apparently does an exceptional breakfast. I wouldn't know because I couldn't eat. Uh, but threw up in the car park because I may have may not have involved playing some sort of weird drinking game with a lot of Grey Goose um, I th and other things, I think. But what I did do before the horrible drunk incident is I played Command & Conquer Generals against the world champion of Command & Conquer Generals. His mm. name is uh, Apollo. He used to be a co-caster with me uh, for StarCraft II. He now organizes most of the DreamHack uh, no, sorry, not dream. Hack, um, IEM tournaments. So he works for ESL. Mm. He destroyed me over and over and over again. Like, I think it was 20 times. And it wasn't even close. Wasn't even close. And I'm like, this, that is when I realized all of the stuff that you can do in a modern RTS, these competitive esports games, that it was all there in the old games too. It's mm. just none of us could see it because streaming yeah. wasn't a thing none of us realized we were you couldn't basically learn from someone else and it's 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 the way education improved the second people started because once mass communication happens literacy goes up that kind of thing yes but with video games right yeah yeah we were basically yeah. all terrible and we, <laughs> we didn't know it we were ignorant yeah. of that and if you do go back and play, because you can play Red Alert right now with OpenRA, it's a fucking awesome open source port of Red Alert, and I'd highly recommend it mm. to everybody. Go back and play it, and then go watch good people play it, and you'll realize, oh, fuck. Everything, it was all there. Like, all of that stuff, all of that high-level stuff that we complain about in something like StarCraft II in a modern esports-oriented game, it was there in the first place, we just didn't know. And mm. capturing... Um, and this this debate's come up with Quake Champions quite a bit. Capturing how you think you remember the old games versus how they actually were is oh, a challenge. Yeah. Nostalgia is a horrible thing. Like, yeah. and this is something we've definitely. I mean, volume. So volumes uh, for those who watching who don't didn't hear of it. It's a stealth game, and it's got very much inspired by kind of my love of Metal Gear Solid as a kid. Yeah, sure. And it's so. I was reading reviews of it that were talking about how you know which mechanics I'd stolen from Metal Gear Solid. And don't get me wrong, I stole a lot of mechanics from Mel Gibson Solid. But weirdly, <laughs> in a non, you know, infringing way. I was about to say, don't um, worry, so did Konami, but eh. <laughs> eh. Um, <laughs> Let's not go but, into um, that. But like they, but, but people remember Metal Gear Solid having mechanics that we put in the game when it didn't. Because it nostalgia, didn't. you do, you do sugarcoat. And I think there's been a few examples of games which have not realized they have to modernize their design. Yeah. Um, and have, have come out and basically feel like games from 10 years ago. And that, you know, things have moved on. I'm interested, actually, with RTSs. Do you feel that 
part of that, do you think it's just the streaming that's made those higher le level plays um, more available? Or do you think the designers have gotten better at pushing you in that direction with the, with, with the game? Um, I think I think it's the esports scene. I think it's the it streamers. is the esports scene uh, in particular. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it okay. was in South Korea. Like obviously, that esports scene kicked off over ten years ago with Brood War, mm. and they had the television broadcasts and things, and that made a lot more people aware of it. That said, Brood War still, even to this day, very popular in South Korea, which is why they're making StarCraft Remastered because they know the market's there for it, and mm. a lot of people played a version of StarCraft um, in the PC bungs which is the, the land centers, which is where a lot of people game over there. Mm. They didn't play ladder. They played like UMS games. They play custom games. And that's still a lot of what people do over there. So I'm thinking that a lot of people really love watching RTS and Dodger can attest to this. Like we're both absolute shit at StarCraft, but we like, it's fun to love watch. Love watching it though. Yeah. Yeah. And, what would be cool you know what would be cool is like oh well we can play a version of that that's like mm. we get the we get what we sort of remember from 10 years ago playing stuff like command and conquer or 20 years ago in this case being when we were kids sure. but we're not bombarded by the person i'm playing against is light years ahead of me and i can never beat them in a million years and this isn't fun as a direct result of that mm. um, it's an so interesting challenge from a design perspective to like work out how to because you want you want you want Premier League to be awesome, but you also want kids playing five of sides of to do. be awesome, yeah. right? Like, and that's yeah. doing that in one game. Like, that must be. I've not designed an RTS. I played a lot of Red Alert two as a kid, but like, I've never like sat down and tried to design one. And I can mm. imagine nowadays that must be a nightmare. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's, there's been a, there's been a few over the last few years, and none of them gained traction. Uh, things mm. like Grey Goo, uh, which was heavily I pushed. Grey Goo, yeah. It had, I remember it had that being time. big at events, right? They did a lot of marketing with that one. Yeah, the, that's the problem. Like that, they were the only ones doing it. Like uh, it didn't pick up. Uh, like nobody outside oh, okay. of there did. Um, Act of aggression was another one, mm. uh, which was actually completely overcomplicated. They actually re-released that. They they gutted the part of the game design and started over with it. If you play it right now versus what it was at launch, it ha half the resources aren't there, and the UI mm. is completely different, and the way the game flow is completely different. Uh, so if anyone did buy that and it's like, oh, this is too much for me. Go back and play it now. You might be surprised. Uh, it, hmm. it was it was a good game. It's just it the barrier to entry was kind of just too much. Um, sure. So there's stuff like that. Um, Dodger, was there like um, any sort of genre that you played as a kid and then came back to as an adult and was like, God, this is not how I remember it. The, you know, I, I sort of wish that they did things the way that I perceived them back when I was like 10 to 15 years old um it's a tough one i know that is tough yeah i've i've noticed that um with like older rpgs i don't have the patience for them that i used mm -hmm. to yeah um but i i think that that's just the difference between being a kid and having lots of time and not as many worries and mm. being an adult and feeling like god there's i'm sinking so much time into this and i yes, really just yeah. want to like get the experience out of it and move on to the next thing yeah um with games with games like rts's as an adult i can now look at them and say oh i never understood how to play those yeah you know as a kid i was able to enjoy them oh actually you know what fighting games fighting games yeah fighting games yeah. when i was a kid i thought i was fucking amazing at fighting games. <laughs> yeah. like, i played i played them all the time with my brother we played mortal Kombat. we played tekken we played like all of them right um and i thought that i was really really good and looking back i'm like i was probably awful you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, i was probably terrible because i can't go back and play those games and feel satisfied with how i play them anymore mm. um which is which is kind of disappointing i want to have that, that feeling again of playing a fighting game and being like i could beat anybody yeah. i could beat yeah. anybody at this game i'm amazing at this game right there's there's no universe where i play a fighting game anymore and think to myself i'm good at this ever ever again <laughs> the only way to so, do it is to make the game and then build in your own cheats <laughs> right that, that how, allows you to feel super how superior do i play these games and I'm how the do best i person in the world specifically cater it to me <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i don't think that necessarily answered your question 
but it actually um, did and uh, i just wonder how much of that is due to uh, you know your interest in evo and things like that you know because that right you watch quite a lot of yeah that. actually yeah maybe maybe that's true that the the only reason that i understand that i'm bad at those games now is because esports has yeah. become so prevalent and i really mm. enjoy watching people who are really good at games that i used to love mm -hmm. um tetris is another one i used to think i was amazing at tetris um, I think it's I think it's the type B version of original NES Tetris where yeah. it's just starts you at level one and goes up to 20 or 19. I think it just ended at 19 yeah. and I would get up to 19 almost every time that I played. Yeah. And I was like, God, I'm so good at this game. <laughs> like, like, I'm basically the best. And, and then you watch YouTube now I watch Japanese, people like who who play tetris at like awesome games done quick and stuff and i'm like fuck <laughs> <laughs> i was never good i was never good yeah. games done so quick may like have a ruined everyone's nostalgia it, for everything like it's just like oh my god what are you even doing like that's, that's crazy i i think yeah. it, the original soul caliber was definitely a game for me that i thought i was very good at until i played it um also marvelous capcom 2 was a prime example like that's a yeah. game that the skill ceiling is ludicrously high. I'm like, I am a god. I was playing on the Dreamcast, kicking my brother's ass. Anyone that came over, I kicked their ass. And then I watch Eva. And I, oh, oh fuck! I just, I couldn't even. I just yeah. could not even get close to that. It it is interesting. It it is definitely a challenge, as you said, in design to try and replicate that feeling later on, so people feel satisfied by it. Yeah, I wonder if this is an us thing, though. I wonder if this is just, like, our generation who, who didn't have this. Like, I wonder if, like, I don't know, a 15-year-old now who's playing, you know, a modern game is is bothered by the fact that they'll never be the best. Like, I wonder if it's mm. just because we were... Because you basically... Because you had that feeling and then it was taken yeah. away from you. Like, I wonder sure. if, like, if you're just well, you're... born into that, maybe you don't care. Yeah, because we we've all been alive at the at the breach point, right, between... Mm -hmm my world is small to my world is the world yes right absolutely yeah. um from saying the only person who is better than me is the best person at the arcade to it now being oh i could go online at any moment and watch hundreds of people who are better than me absolutely. you know hundreds people of people who are, who are actually no mind-blowingly yeah. incredible yeah so maybe yeah. maybe yeah it's it's kind of an interesting moment like our generation being alive for both of those feelings and just and the internet in general as well right? comes from. like are you old enough that you remember going to a library to have to research you're probably a bit younger aren't you than that uh I'm i know 30. john's old enough oh, oh you're 30. 30. okay so yeah, yeah. you're <laughs> but well, like, that far so... apart <laughs> far enough john um but I'm the <laughs> I'm i know sorry I, i've lost focus i need to have a beef uh. with jesse not with you jesse can't defend himself <laughs> no. oh, is it? This sorry, everything is gonna slow this up one jesse your window if you're not careful all jesse yeah. <laughs> but like yeah like the internet like trying to explain to someone young nowadays the idea that like there was a time where you didn't have instant access to any like the idea of imd back when you would watch a movie you'd be like i'm sure i've seen that guy in something yeah you'd have no way of finding out yes right. what you'd seen that guy in like have to go look in it's encyclopedias crazy. for stuff changes the way you think right yeah it mm. does yeah mm. yeah i think it's got a lot to do with it wow that got rather philosophical very much in a hurry and it's like that all came from <laughs> wolfenstein hmm. that's good. That's good. wolfenstein wolfenstein comes up on this podcast all the time really and still that's because never me and jesse really it. because what? because everybody loves it so much and mm. i still just never okay, like that, you gotta you gotta resolve that i know it's on my like constant mental list of games that i really need to sit down and play um you jesse did. met my bro i i got married last yes, week indeed. congratulations I congratulations. Thank you. congratulations i was gonna um, say hey we could applaud with jesse here but he's not so <laughs> <laughs> jesse jesse was at the wedding and he um he and sam i think sam like evangelized pretty hard but the both of them told my brother you have to play horizon zero dawn because hmm. horizon zero game. dawn is another game that at least right now i feel like everybody that i know is just like man you know it's a great fucking game horizon yeah. zero dawn it is um, it really is yeah so uh <laughs> sam evangelized really hard for <laughs> it jesse told him that he should definitely play it and so i got a text from my brother this morning and he was like i'm playing horizon and holy fuck this game is amazing <laughs> it really is it's so good <laughs> but it's it's fun it again kind of 
spinning off from what we were just saying, it's really fun because my brother does not play games super often. Okay. Okay. So so he's when, got bigger jumps between things. Then. Yeah. So he like mm. like the last game that he played was Shadow of Mordor, and I think he played like the Uncharted series. Okay. And so now he's playing Horizon, and he's like, "This is incredible." oh my God, I didn't even know people were making games that are this beautiful, you know, like <laughs> to see the video games industry through his eyes is yeah, so fun yeah, for wow. me to like get texts where he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah. Normal people. These? I love it. <laughs> where you meet normal people who like, who haven't played everything. And you can show them these. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a lot of fun. It's like, those. you shouldn't mock a person like that. You certainly sort of look down at them. It's like, oh, you're not a real game. Oh, it's like, no, no. They, no. they, I, I think, like, to me, I'm like, I almost wish, I wish that was me, because I wish yeah. I, because I'm chasing, and I think a lot of us are chasing that feeling, and we so rarely get it. You know? So when something comes along that does cause it, it's, we talk quite a bit about the disconnect between critics, um, sort of YouTubers and stuff, and the regular gaming public, as it were. So sure. you know, when critics go berserk for a game, and then people are like, uh, I don't, why are you so excited about that? It's like because we, because we're bored of video games. That's mm. that's the that's the reality of it. We played so fucking many of them, and we yeah. see so many common themes and mechanics showing up time and time again that we're looking for that new experience. Do and you find yourself like gravitating towards other meat? Like I'm. I like films, but I'm definitely more of a kind of casual viewer of movies. And I, I yeah, enjoy having something I don't, like I, I get like, I'll go on a long trip and I'll get like an Empire magazine. I'll be like, they're making a new whatever, Ghostbusters. And it's like, wow, that didn't go so well. But like, no, <laughs> like you'll, <laughs> but you'll open up, you'll, you know, just like that kind of, I like not knowing as much about yeah. films yeah. as I do about games. I never watch like, trailers. It's nice to be in the film. Like, Second, I, mean, sorry? I, I never watch trailers as a matter of course. Uh, yeah, I, I it's like, that. well, they're, they're so spoiler filled these days anyway, and I'd rather go in blind. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, here's a great example. We watched The Great Wall last night, and I fucking oh, Damon, loved Matt it. Damon. I fucking loved it. It was visually incredible. The fucking costume designs, the amount of awesome color in it, the huh. writing was funny. Uh, Matt Damon was a cool character. His sidekick, who's um, the guy who plays Oberyn Martell in yeah. Game of Thrones was fucking awesome. Uh, William Defoe was great in it as well. And mm. that's a movie that got fucking critically panned. And I'm like, I love this. This is mm. cool. Yeah, we, I, I think we talked about it a little bit on this podcast because a big group of us went to see that movie and mm. we came out of it being like, that movie wasn't like a good movie, at least to us. <laughs> we were like, that wasn't a good movie, yeah. but fuck, it was fun. Like, yeah, that was, that that was, was just it. a it was fun, fun That's what you want, isn't it? Sometimes? It is. Movie. That is all I want, like, from okay. movies, I think. And it, there's something freeing about that because uh, that's not just what I want from games, but I keep making the argument time and again when people try and bring up how can you call yourself a critic, like bad movies, and yet only like good games i'm like because one of them i have to work to get my entertainment from and the other one i could fucking sit there and chomp on junior mints and enjoy it <laughs> passively enjoy it there's like yeah. that doesn't require any effort on my part there's no frustration yeah. you know and especially considering the length of a movie you know they're usually over in two hours even if it's like i'm not really having a lot of fun here it's like cool but it's yeah. over now all right mm -hmm. And and the experience, you know, uh, being in a theater with a big screen and great sound is just enjoyable. And, and a good audience, like when it's a good audience and everyone yeah. in, in the moment. That shuts the fuck up. Bad audience, not so much. <laughs> the, a good audience for me is somebody that never ever talks. Oh, I like a bit. I like a little bit of ambience, especially yeah. like in a comedy, like pulling the. But it's when you have someone who's like talking to the characters or. Hmm. On their I don't, phone, I don't, I don't so like good, but... that. I mean, it's okay at home when it's just me and the missus oh, and the sure, kid. Oh, sure. Yeah, it's different. Uh, but in, in a movie theater with strangers, no. Uh, maybe if, if you're with friends. Like for me, if I'm going to watch a movie with, with that, I'll watch it with riff tracks on. Uh, sure. Yeah. You want right. someone funny talking in your ear while you're yeah, talking. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I don't yeah, want yeah. that idiot back there who thinks <laughs> he, yeah. his jokes are original. I want professional people who are actually funny talking over mm. my movies. I think if, if I was going to say there's a media type where I absolutely do not have my ear to the ground, but I always get really excited when someone says, like, you should look into this, it's comic books. Um, yeah. Because I love reading, like, a new graphic novel series mm -hmm. or a new, you know, the first issue of a brand new thing. Um, I, I love doing that. 
but I'm mm. not the sort of person that's constantly looking for that necessarily. Um, so I, yeah, I think that that's, that's my form of media where I just go in blind on literally Dip everything. In, yeah, follow people's recommendations. Yeah. Comic books yeah. are interesting because they have such an effect, obviously, like I am getting someone who's really into comics. I'm not into comics massively. Like I read, I read like you, I read the ones that people suggest to me, mm -hmm. but like a comic book fan can be so fun to talk. Like my girlfriend's a big comic book fan mm -hmm. and, and she'll, she, she knows who all these characters are and she gets a kick out of like being the authority on that stuff. And, yeah. Like, we'll come out of a Marvel movie that'll be like, yeah, so that, that thing that happened 25 minutes in, that's actually like this character and blah, blah, blah. And it's not blah, 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 blah. Obviously everything my girlfriend says is insightful and interesting. Right, um, of course. <laughs> of course. Uh, she, that's on public movie. record now, yeah. so you can't dispute <laughs> it's it. It's on public record, I've yep. said that. Um, but, um, but yeah, so I, I like hearing people who are passionate about a thing that I don't really know about explain it. Like that's totally. interesting. Yes. Yeah. It's awesome to learn from mm. people like that i i barely ever read comics i i dip in i mostly just i had a little binge on deadpool from comiXology or whatever because they had yeah. a bunch of them on sale so i'm like i'll try this sure and mm -hmm. uh read the civil war and stuff like that so that's cool sure. i'm just you know i'm not just big into them man yeah i haven't i haven't gone in on marvel or dc or any of that stuff in years um yeah. I've i watch i watch the with... tv shows i watch like agents of shield yeah. and uh yeah. flash flash is so bad <laughs> it's oh it's like... so bad but so good i know it's the cheesiest <laughs> shit oh, um God. yeah i've been keeping up with like saga i think saga is amazing yeah yeah i read um, the first few of those and i was like yeah i can see why people like this yeah rat queens is ridiculous i love that one and recently I've had two different people say that there's a new one from Image Comics called Motor Crush. Again, hmm. no idea what it is. No, I, I don't know I don't anything know is, about it, it but it's from the team that did the most recent Batgirl series. Okay. So I'm like, okay. maybe I'll hop in on that. Maybe I'll hop in on mm. blind, blind. I don't want to know. I don't want to know anything. <laughs> yeah. I think what I understood about comic books is the issue is that there's a massive variance in quality, even with the same character because they change the writers and some of them have some very, very bad ideas about how to <laughs> deal with uh, certain things. Uh, I, yeah. I saw some panels, I think, from uh, when uh, they did the whole uh, Thor is now a woman thing. Mm, and yeah. some of those panels were horribly hostile and cringeworthy and the series tanked. Like, they, they it sold very poorly as a direct result of that. So I, I'm kind of glad the market is saying what it's okay with and what it's not okay with. But then there are authors that are incredible, like with amazing writers, like, you've got to read this because it's fantastic. But it's going to be pretty rough to be a comic book fan that likes a particular character, reads all of those things, and then, like, the character takes a fucking nosedive because somebody's just decided to take them in a particular direction. But it's also like you just said it's also part of the ecosystem for there to be new writers new teams sure. like new i was gonna arts. say like you want to mix up the status quo as much as possible mm -hmm. right yeah, yeah and I like that's, even, that's the other even side if of you it. really love a character and there's a, a stint where it does not go well you mm -hmm. know that next time it could be a completely new mm -hmm. team with a completely new direction so yeah. i don't think anybody's ever filled with this sense of dread like oh my god my fave is dead forever <laughs> like, it's yeah because there's not... a lot of choice available you know it's like okay yeah. this series has taken a turn for the worst I'll just go read something else then because there's plenty of other options. And eventually, because they do rotate writers out, that it will eventually go, hopefully recover and go in a better direction and all that sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, I suppose it is not too bad. It's hardly the end of the world. It's like, oh God, no. Uh, and the version you don't like might be someone's first time reading or it might be like their favorite ever, you know? So yeah, it's- everyone likes different I, you know, stuff, yeah. You, exactly, you can't be all things to all people, right? So, or, or you yeah. can if you keep mess mixing things up, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that's that's when stuff gets bad because it's like I'm gonna try to be everything to everybody. I'm like, no, that doesn't yeah, work. That doesn't true. work for that's anything. True. Don't do that. So yeah, hmm, comic books. I haven't I haven't actually read one in a while. I might have to go back and see if there's anything l lately that I've been missing that's pretty cool. Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, so movies and TV shows and things like that. There was um an example of. You were talking earlier about you love to hear a passionate person talk about something that you don't know a lot about. Absolutely. Uh, the example for that quite a while ago, uh, and I think I know a bit more about it now, was watching some stuff from Shut Up and Sit Down about board games. 
mm. uh, because uh, Quinn's on that show is very, very mm. good at passionately delivering why he likes something. And yeah, that gets to me the essence of why this game is either going to be very interesting to me or completely not my thing at all. Yeah. Uh, Dude, that's a skill that I really have a lot of reverence for. If If I can listen to somebody and they really easily or at least it comes across easily like they articulate themselves really well mm. and they understand what they're talking about enough to deconstruct it and kind of help me understand where they're coming from that's a skill absolutely yeah. like when yeah. people can Massively. do that i'm just like there's also there also needs to so be a, a little bit of a skill in the uh, viewer of that the consumer of that information which unfortunately some people online don't seem to have that is i can take this person's different experience and contrast it and get information out of it relative to how i think not instead of getting mad <laughs> this so, person doesn't this, fully agree with wrong. me like, this person doesn't agree with me. fuck this person <laughs> it's like no that person's opinion is no more or less valid than yours they're giving mm -hmm. you the reasoning why they feel that way and that is valuable to you even if you don't feel that way in fact i'd i'd say in many ways it is super valuable to people it's what i try to do when i explain a game and put like yep i don't think i'm gonna like this at all but i can exactly see where you are coming from with it and i was able to make that judgment relative to yours because i know what you like and why you like it because you explain that uh, right. and that to me is the most important thing you can do in consumer criticism without a doubt without question but of course consumers also have to be have the skill to be able to absorb that and not fly off the fucking handle <laughs> and basically what i'm telling you is don't define your personality by the things you like because then you can become awful as try we... try making video games mate <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly i do stuff. not envy you my dude <laughs> yeah. it's 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 it, well i mean obviously it's also the most amazing thing in the world mm -hmm. like you get yeah you get rubbish but like hearing someone say they love something you made is just like the best feeling feels good so, yeah. no doubt you can get kind same of idea right you're creating addictive. content just like i am you know yep your content you know doesn't take three years to do i guess but generally it's still not. the same thing right generally I, not unless you're I, waiting for jesse to show up hey yeah. so, uh, beef, no, beef, beef, sorry, beef. Beef. sorry. Beef. that was low-hanging fruit i apologize i apologize i like how you turned exactly the right way to address the beef which was perfect <laughs> it's that way yeah <laughs> oh did i was i on yep yep that's it that's where the that's beef it. is the so if nice. you wish to address I'll the beef that. at any point that's where it is <laughs> nice oh man nice. yeah oh. basically <laughs> don't be an ass and critically think and understand that people like different things and that's actually mm. cool and if everybody liked the same thing the world would be really fucking boring so there'd be like three video games yep there'd only be because because remember you're not allowed to do anything if somebody's already done it before right like no because then you're then you're just copying and yeah it's just plagiarism. yeah yeah no because no no gamer has ever gone i liked that game i'd like more stuff like that that's yeah. never across right. anyone's mind no, yeah oh i'd like not. this if only this you know yeah exactly like, yeah genres aren't real guys you can only have one video game there's only one world war ii video game you're in like one modern time video game one vietnam video game you want like overwatch civ 5 yep and mario that's yeah, it those are the that's only all, three the, video those games. The only games that exist now yeah, yeah. no there's no <laughs> other video games so um but on that note maybe cool it on zombie games for a while maybe take yes, a break possibly you know? yeah that's that is, that's getting a little <laughs> people well, keep buying them though don't they that's the crazy thing yeah, i mean you, you can't, like them apparently. it's hard it's hard to say to people don't make them when you are seeing some that are still making money hand over fist right but apparently a mummies is a thing now uh, uh, did you see the strain uh, the trailer for the guy uh, not if you're tom cruise they aren't ho -ho. oh no ho -ho. absolutely not that's not the real mummy. Hashtag not the real mummy. The, re I, the mummy returns mummy. is the I, best I'm movie. I'm so offended by that trailer. There is not one goof in that entire trailer. Mm. And I'm like, this is not the mummy. You realize the mummy is silly, right? It's dumb. Super silly. Yeah. 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 The mummy and the mummy it returns. so much. Two of the best like movies ever. Ever. Really seriously. Ever. And you try to make them <laughs> super dark and gritty. We did not go and see it for that reason. I'm sorry. It it did not happen. We we did not. Yeah, the Rock didn't die for this. Hashtag like, not my mummy. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag not my mummy. You know, it's it's just unacceptable. 
I'm trying to think how you'd make a mummy like cool in the modern time, like without getting Brendan Fraser to get Brendan it. Fraser. Like, Brendan get Fraser's Brendan career Fraser died for it. this. Damn it! Nice. Where is nice. my Brendan Fraser? Get him back. He's far more interesting. <laughs> the, uh, maybe hey. like somebody could maybe do something cool with like. Uh, Wait a minute! I'm gonna they... get a piece of paper. One second. Write this down. <laughs> Steal this the ideas. Be cool. I'm so Carry sorry, on, Mike. You have a lot <laughs> of faith. Go for it. Go for it. Um, like. If, you know, because everybody likes to come up with their own versions of vampires, right? Like maybe mummies are just spirits that need to be wrapped up in something and they have to be wrapped up in like other people's flesh. Like flesh, like a flesh mummy. Like yeah, a, like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. So like, like if you look really closely, there's like, pigs it's like blankets. strips oh, of people. Yeah. This is, this that's this not just wildly terrifying yeah. and horrific. Good God. <laughs> or, or if we wanted to go the Brendan Fraser route, uh, wrapped up in staplers. I was going to say wrapped up in Brendan Fraser. Wrapped up in pieces oh, of shit. Brendan wrapped Fraser. Wrapped up in just lots of Brendan Fraser. Just loads <laughs> of Brendan Fraser. Specifically this, Brendan Fraser's That's exactly jaw. what they should have done. Brendan Fraser should have been the mummy in the remake of The Mummy. Yeah, like, he, yeah. does he not even have, like, a cameo as, like, back in my day? I don't believe so. I no, do well, not okay. believe so. That's that's why mm. it did so badly. That's why it bombed at the box office. Uh, people just, mm. they, don't, they don't know. They do not know. Bring back Brendan Fraser, and I will go and see your movie again. That's a guarantee. Speaking on the mummies, though, I, as I was saying about Strange Brigade, <laughs> the company that made three Nazi zombies games is like, okay, we want to make another game like this, but we're going to do it with mummies this time. We're going to kind of set it in the 1930s uh, mm. and make it a bit, um, ah, the how will the Strange Brigade get out of this one? Sort of uh, silly black and white kind of B-movie style thing. Uh, mm. That kind of looks pretty fun. Uh, and I think there's, even though mummies is like, are mummies an interesting antagonist? I guess if you threw in some really cool, like, Egyptian-themed stuff, it's like a statue of Anubis comes to try I guess if you wrap them up you. in Brendan Fraser's... No! We have then, yeah. already covered I this. I bet we could get his image rights. I bet I, I bet we could get <laughs> Brendan Fraser's image rights. You think going rights. cheap these days? <laughs> Benny Fraser. I've, I've, Long time I've, no worked, I've worked with some actors. I could go. I could find a path to him. We get. We could get Brendan Fraser's specifically just his jaw. Yes, that's all we need. Only really. that. The rest is kind of forgettable. But... It detaches and sucks in everything. <laughs> it's basically Bre Kirby Fraser is what it is. A mummy Kirby Fraser. Mm. Nice. It's just a modern orchestral happen. remake of uh, Gourmet Race going on I'll, in the background. I'll open up Unity sucking in, the in towns of people. Let's get started. Let's get started. Download some uh, Unity assets. We'll get rolling. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You can make this. This is a video game right here. Wasn't there mm. a thing while I was gone where Nintendo really didn't like people using the term possess for uh, the whole new Mario thing? Uh, How Mario like throws his hat on stuff and people me, were like, right? oh, when Mario throws his hat on a thing, it he possesses, possesses it. People. And they're like, he does, no, no he captures it. He doesn't, he doesn't possess <laughs> it. <laughs> they're really, He's not I mean, a demon. Like, as a family friendly company, they're probably terrified of one, being called like devil or demon worshippers. And secondly, yeah. I imagine that would cause problems in China and possibly some other countries. Like, yeah, True. they are not a fan of that. True. I uh, actually hadn't thought about that. We've, yeah, we've talked that, about that stuff at length yeah, recently. But, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, that's something that you do not want to generally do if you want to sell your video <laughs> game over there. I just, I just love the idea of people saying, oh, yeah, you know, when, like, when he possesses a dinosaur, like, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't possess, possess it, though. It. No, he's not, no. He's not, he's not possessing the dinosaur. He's, he's not, just capturing Mario's it not a demon. like a Pokemans. No. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because to be fair, Pokemon, if you investigate if you too heavily that Pokemon, down, like, that's... Like, that's horrible. What? It's, basically, it's, it's basically like cockfighting, right? Yes, like, that's exactly like, what it is. Fun, fun yeah. cockfighting. Yeah. And, and then you they imprison the animal. The they just go to the shadow realm. You, yeah. you know what would make Pokemon better? <laughs> what? A mummy made of Brendan Fraser's. Uh, we're going to a break. When we come back after the... <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't have coffee in my mouth. When did he come back? I was the waiting. Brendan I was Frazier. trying to time it with the sip. Like the video games might happen, but I have no guarantee of that whatsoever. <laughs> God damn it! Buy my StarCraft voice pack. We'll be back after the break. I'm pretty sure that game's on sale right now. Shameless plugging the show. We'll be back after the break. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the co-optional podcast featuring Jesse Ox over there. Hey. Yeah. Uh That isn't working. Let's try that again.
Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. StarCraft 2 can be pretty rough sometimes. It's skillful and demanding, it stretches even professional players to their absolute limits. Bearing that in mind, the last thing you need is somebody yelling in your ear and reminding you of all your mistakes. Your SCVs can't mine when they're dead. That's why I created the Total Biscuit announcer pack for StarCraft 2. Enjoy positive reinforcement. Your supply blocked, might as well GG now. Sincere compliments. What do you lack in minerals? You make up for in charm. And calm, relaxing notifications. Your base is under attack. We're all gonna die! Are you a Zerg player? Let me tell you how beautiful you are. Metamorphosis is a beautiful thing. Oh, oh god, it's monstrous! All this and much, much more from the man who brought you the best play-by-play -play event in history. Build this supply depot right here. This could be the tactical crucial move of this entire game. It's all about 20%, 25%, and here we go. The Total Biscuit Announcer Pack. Available to buy now in Game on the Collection page. Resume the real-time strategy, Ing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Co-Optional Podcast. Hopefully you enjoy the wonderful sounds of Miracle of Sound with Force of Nature. Go and check out his channel. He is a frequent guest on the show and, of course, on the Podquisition <coughs> over at youtube.com slash Miracle of Sound. Gav's a great guy, fantastic, mm. and his music is brilliant. That's you know what else art. is brilliant? Yeah, he is. He is. He's lovely. He's lovely. I was like, what else is brilliant? Tell what me. Else what else is brilliant? brilliant? July the 4th is next week. The wonderful Independence Day, a day of patriotism, a day of the American spirit. John, so, we're not meant to celebrate that. Yeah, I know. Which is why <laughs> next week on the Co-Optional Podcast, our guests will be Yahtzee and we're going to ruin it for everybody. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Myself and Ben Yahtzee Croshaw on the Independence Day episode of the Co-Optional Podcast on July nice. the 4th. Yes, because we love America. It's wonderful. I sell, uh, I think, about 60% of my games in America, so... Big Good on you. Good so, on you, so Americans cheers. who love you. Cheers, America. Cheers, America. You keep being you. Indeed. It's going to be a hell of a show one way or the other. All right, let's get back <laughs> to talking about some games that we have been playing. I've got a few. I can, I've got a few I can toss out mm. for you if you're so desire. So... Dodger remembers that whenever this comes up that I'm like, I'm scared to hell of this game. And that game was Stellaris, the Paradox mm, yes. uh, Space Grand strategy mm -hmm. that people keep telling me to play. I'm like, no, it's too intimidating. I, I couldn't possibly. I, I finally did. and I popped in and watched some of that stream. Yep, I did it because there's a Star Trek mod and it's a really good one. It's called I've Star... heard that's great. Yeah, Star Trek New Dawn, I believe. Let's double tell it to go the right. It, uh, Star, oh, sorry, Star Trek Horizons. Yeah, Star Trek Hor New Horizons is the name of it. Uh, it's currently still in development. Uh, it's available on the Steam Workshop. And I, I was just bored. I was bored that day, and I was like looking around for things like, yeah, I haven't played a good mod in a while. I wonder, mm. like, you know, and the things that I generally like the most are Star Wars mods and Star Trek mods. I'm like, well, is there anything I haven't played yet? I'm like, oh, oh, there is. There's a Star Trek mod. Let's give it a bash. And I'm like, oh, God, can I learn this? Like, I don't even know how to play Stellaris. Mm. You know what's odd about it is that the game has basically no tutorial. The mod has basically no tutorial. And it was not in any way hard to learn. Like, it it was really logical and well laid out. It so were... it didn't need a tutorial? No, uh, it didn't seem to. Uh, at least probably for somebody that's played a decent number of space strategy mm. games, which I have. A lot of stuff was where you expected it to be. Yeah. Where it made sense, right? The yeah. user interface was very, very good. Uh, mm. And I, there are several of those games where it is not. Like, it, the things like the research tree in Endless Space, for example, and Endless Space 2, makes no goddamn sense to anybody. What the fuck is quantum flux mechanics? Why is it here? What does it do? Oh, the description's five pages long. That's great. And, and it's like this giant web of bullshit everywhere. Mm. And it's like, I, what do I want to research? I don't know. B give me some advice. Tell me. What do I, do I need? Um, Pergium phase capacitors. Do I need <laughs> a quantum tunneling sorcery 
Codonus. Do I need the Voldemort drive? Or that? Judging by the names, yes, we need. Yeah, all, you need all, all of that. those things. You need all of that. That's yeah. sound, that sounds amazing. Yes, I think it's, everything. Did the Libyans in Back to the Future want the Quantum Tunnel or the Quantum Flux? I can't remember. I can't Which recall. I'm going to assume they want both because they're kind of. <laughs> of course, like why that. not? Yeah. yeah, just go for it. The, this and this was like. Yeah, I have some familiarity with Star Trek, which helps a bit, and I mm-hmm. uh, got into it. And the early game is really, really well-paced. It's like, oh, cool, I'm getting the hang of this. And the mod itself, which makes it kind of cooler than almost every Star Trek mod I've ever played, is it's mm-hmm. heavily based on the Star Trek timeline. So I was playing the Federation. Whereabouts is it? In the right at the start. Sto- right at the start. Right like, yeah, basically. So you're kind of your, your first contact. Enterprise onwards. era. Yeah, uh, okay. before cool. pre-Federation era. Uh, so cool. you start off there and then the Zindi fucking happen as if you've ever watched the Enterprise series like there's a major event in which Earth mm-hmm. gets royally fucked and big it, laser beam from space right? yep yep uh, yeah. pretty much half of America just gets cut to pieces like mm-hmm. by this thing um, and that event happens and you can stop it like it's actually possible if you have enough firepower That's you can stop the thing from getting to Earth and almost like, like alter the timeline Hmm. But it, it's so very cool in the way that it's like, these are events that I know, and I'm so I get to play out sort of the whole history of this. And there's hmm. a huge number of races in the mod, so I'm going to assume that they have not got uh, custom stories for everybody yet. Uh, I might try the Klingons and see if they've got anything major in there, because they probably prioritize like the major races, right? The Federation, the Klingons, and all that kind of stuff. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, but I had, I mean, I had a blast uh with it uh, learned it and then once i formed the federation everything was like what the fuck just what did i just do because i had four planets <laughs> then i had 30 it's, it's like yeah cool federation sounds like a great idea 30 planets whoa 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 and it's like you are spending too much money here you are running out of energy credits here there are too many planets for you to effectively manage here's the sector system uh put it, things into sectors what are sectors i don't know let's do this ah you should have relied more on the Vulcans to help you throughout that difficult period. Yeah. They were offering your help. They were offering their help. And we they did didn't so listen. well last time, you know? It's, mm. Yeah, it went... And apparently, like, kind of Solaris does things like this Ooh. as well, that they slowly... You there? You there, John? I'm here. Uh, I'm here, just... Yeah, I'm here. Could you hear me? Because I can hear you. <laughs> now I can... Yeah. Good. There yeah. you are. He's in... Yeah. Okay. Good. Yes. Just very brief drop. Apologies for that. But, yeah, it's... I, I heard Stellaris is kind of like that as well, where it slowly introduces mechanics, and by the end game, it gets real fucking complicated. And but at least it introduces good. them slowly, I suppose, right? That's the... Yeah, that's a good thing. and Because yeah. not only that, it keeps you interested as well. Sure. Uh, I was, the, as a contrast to that, I was playing Endless Space 2. First eight hours? Cool, this is awesome, loving it. Ground to a screeching halt. I was just like, oh, this is it, isn't it? Because the game has really boring combat. The diplomacy is kind of basic. There's no, like, espionage system or anything. It's like, oh, this is really unfortunate. And I, I just don't have the desire to play it again now. Because, mm. it, it, again, like, the whole thing just went off the rails. Whereas this seems to be really throwing some cool stuff at me. And, like, oh, ah, I want to get to the era where I can build Kirk ship. I want to build a Constitution class and go and explore strange <laughs> worlds and fight the Tholians <laughs> and all this shit. And that helps because I've got a lot of stuff to look forward to mm. in that game. So and you know that roadmap as well as a Star yes. Trek. Are you a fellow owner of like the Star Trek chronology and the Star Trek encyclopedia as a kid? Were you I, that nerdy? Yes, or... I, I owned Good. not cool. only the Star Trek encyclopedia, but the updated hardback is Star Trek encyclopedia, various technical oh. manuals. And currently on my shelves, I have uh, over 90 starships. Um, I my so, my business yeah, partner I as it. a st- my business partner as a joining the company present got me the next gen technical manual. I was like, this is going to work. This is a this is a yeah. working relationship that's going to work. <laughs> yep. uh, he, get gets me. Me. he gets you me. Get he gets me. He gets me. It's fine. Yeah, there's there's some good stuff in that regard. I loved reading that. So yeah, mm. it was. It, I'm I'm liking it so far. I, but people that always uh, have a lot of criticisms of like I've played a thousand hours of Celerus and I've started to notice there's something wrong with it. You played a thousand mm. hours of it though. Like, yeah, exactly. You did, there's you, a flaw here. Yeah. Yeah, you you did get this. It's always that. It's like yeah, of course. Like. If you play any game for that long, you're going to probably come across some sort of flaw. Like, nothing's perfect. So, you did still get a thousand hours of enjoyment, though, right? It should be, John. It should be. Oh, of course, yeah. Nothing wrong with with giving that feedback. It's just like, well, the game's shit. Well, I played a thousand hours of it, and this is what's wrong with this very specific thing in the end game. 
It's like, you had fun all the way up to this point. <laughs> that doesn't suddenly erase the thousand hours of fun that you had just because you've now found something that's kind of put you off it. It's like, okay, cool. It's the same. Um, I think Darkest Dungeon has had a lot of that criticism as well. Mm. So I'm all 400 hours in and I'm starting not to like it. But yeah, it's called you're getting bored of it. <laughs> yeah. You got $400. $400. Four. You know what? I'm just going to sure. shut that thought down. <laughs> <laughs> you got 400 hours of fun about it and then you realized yeah it's kind of flawed and yeah it, it is I, I think a lot of us don't necessarily notice that mm. in this industry because we can't play a game for 400 hours unless it's literally our job to do it and then go mm. play something else it's like for dark you know darkest dungeon for me is still a great game mm. and it's because i haven't ground 400 hours into it <laughs> like okay you know probably gets worse later but i'm okay with that that's not a problem for me. I think as a developer, it's just about communicating, right? It's just about saying, this is how much there is here. This is, this is like, and I think, I think as long as you never say like, oh, it's endless, that's when you run into trouble. You don't pull a no man's really. sky on it. Yeah. It's just yeah. like, you could do anything. You could do anything. Yeah, I was going to no, say, I, I think that is one of the big issues that we have right now is developers trying to, and I'm not a developer, but developers I barely am, to be trying, <laughs> trying to overreach a bit. You know, like mm -hmm. trying to make Setting something that isn't really plausible. Yeah. I think the problem we have is that I think developers often, well, well A, we get excited. That's the, that's the real danger. That's right. like, that's a real killer. But I think as well, often, and this definitely isn't an insult of the audience, but I think developers often don't know what what their audience knows is like poetic language and what they take literally like you know if you people say it's endless and i think a lot of developers hear another developer saying that and going okay so it's they're, they're building lots then but a consumer doesn't know how to make a game so doesn't know like that that's not possible so they get excited and that's not the consumer's fault that's the developer's kind of bad communication yeah right. but yeah it's it's it, it is a trap you see people fall into unfortunately on the developer yeah. side and really, because it's a very competitive industry, you want to get your game noticed in an industry that is making more games than ever, you need to do something to stand out. And Absolutely. Unfortunately, in some cases, the thing that they do is promise the earth when they can't deliver it, and then yeah. there's a massive backlash when the thing actually comes out. You know, again, No Man's Sky, probably one of the best examples of it. It's like, this is not in any way what you promised. And that didn't help that there were outright lies that had been told in regards to that game. That wasn't just a setting expectations higher with language that could be open to interpretation. It was quite literally saying things that weren't in it, which is another matter entirely. But yeah, it, I, I understand when people get angry. It's like, oh, well, you know, this game, there's obviously a problem here, but it's like, well, if you played for that long, you've probably got your money's worth out of it mm. at that point. Yeah. So yeah. it's okay that it's, at a thousand hours in something goes wrong in the end game it's okay Provider. that life is made up of finite experiences right <laughs> yes you know, yes that's fine. move on that's to something fine. else and you know mm. give the feedback and if it's a receptive developer they will listen to it and work on it now stellaris it. is in a much better state than it was a year ago there's been a no lot. developer wants to disappoint you as a no, player right? no developer not. wants to make an experience that makes someone feel bad so yeah i think when feedback's offered politely like you'd be surprised how often it can be worked into stuff yes yeah absolutely <laughs> you know what i also messed about with i've been sort of on a bit of a can i play this game on a different device binge over the last couple of months as dodger will attest when i keep bringing up remote play uh and something kept sort of running through my mind i'm like I have this lovely little 13 inch beautiful screen on my iPad Pro. Mm. Why the fuck can't I use it for something other than shitty iPad games? And I look sure. into it and it's like, is there a way to get video in on this? And oh, it's Apple, of fucking course there isn't. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's a There's waste. There's probably a cable that costs about 90 there quid isn't. you could buy. It doesn't exist. No? Like the old, you were able to do it with the much older iPads. And then oh, okay. Apple's like, how oh, are we going to shut that shit down? And designed <laughs> it so you absolutely could not do it. So mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, you have a lovely quality screen that you literally can't use as an output for fucking anything. Mm. But I heard a little bit of it. You know, was, I was thinking, all right, well, I'm not going to be able to use that. Maybe I like dig out my old Shield tablet and fire that up again and update it and see if I can just do some NVIDIA game stream on it. Sure. 
or maybe I just buy a cheap Windows 10 Atom tablet and use it to do like Steam streaming or something. Hmm. And then I realized, wait a fucking minute. There's a version of Moonlight on iOS. I did not know this. Moonlight is an open source interpreter for NVIDIA Game Stream. And hmm. it's on huh. fucking iOS devices. I'm like, let's try this. There's no way this is going to work well, is it? So set it up. Takes two minutes. And I'm playing Prey at 60 FPS in 1080p on a fucking iPad with no noticeable fucking latency. Hmm. I was like, what really? the fuck? That's crazy. How at did I FPS not know well. that? At 60 FPS. Wow. And it's not dropping. And the, I can't notice any latency. That's in a first person fucking shooter. Well, it's, it's phenomenal. Like, is that presumably on the over your Wi Fi as well, right? Yep. I mean, like, do I you have, have some kind of weird, crazy Wi Fi? Yes. It's mega far. You do have a weird, yes. crazy uh, Wi Fi. My, of course, of you course. have a weird, crazy Wi Fi. My, my router is actually Cthulhu. Uh, if anyone has not seen what this Asus death router looks like, it has like. Is it 10... like one of those ones that looks like something out of Deus Ex with like 20 blades? It has stuff. 10 antenna on it. Um, <laughs> I. It, it is. I, uh, it's either uh, I don't think I have the ROG version, but the Asus ROG version is literally called the Rapture. Just saying. <laughs> I love how they name Game yeah. Attack. It's uh, awesome. Yeah, I have the RT AC five three hundred. Look that up and see how many antennas this giant motherfucking thing has. And yes, it is that big. Like this is not a Thank small you. thing. This is the size of a fucking ja like big dinner plate. And these antenna just rise out of it like the tentacles of Shum Niggeroth. It's like, ah, I am here to conquer the universe with my Eldritch Ancient One powers. It's an Elder God of a router. Tri band double five gigahertz. I mean, I think it might give me a blowjob if I asked it to, but I haven't tried yet because I respect it as a person. So the beast, yeah, it's got some goddamn good Wi Fi. And. Okay. I put on this thing and I'm just floored by how good this streaming is. I was like, this is ridiculous that yeah, we've it's crazy. got to the like point. What the, they're doing with the bandwidth to get that performance out of it. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, it's, it helps that my wife knows what the hell she's doing with network instead of proper QoS and priorities and stuff as well. That'll help as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, this is ridiculous that technology has got to this fucking point where I can use my PC in my office to play Prey at 60 FPS, 1080p, downstairs on an iPad. So what are you playing it on like a wireless controller? Yeah, so um, right. it has MFI support. So right. you can buy, there's a lot of wireless controllers now available for iOS devices through Apple's protocol MFI that all work really good. I, there's oh. one called the Game Vice, which clips to either side of the thing, so you can use it handheld, even on a big <laughs> thing. And then there's just regular controllers. So for me, who has my iPad up on a stand up on my bed, I just use a regular controller. So I bought a Steel Series Nimbus, which is just. I yeah. like that you've combined all this expensive tech and amazing technical know how to event, basically make a Nintendo Switch with basically, PC yes. games on it. Yep. I, yeah. yep. I basically cool. made That's a PC great. Nintendo Switch. And it's like, only obviously I can't leave the house with it. Uh, you can do it over the internet, but obviously it's <laughs> not going to work as well. Uh, but in my house, which is blanketed with Wi-Fi to the point where it's probably going to microwave our brains in the next 10 years, it works so, so well. I was like, wow, that has opened up a lot of possibilities now. Hmm. Like I can be away from my PC, but play any PC game pretty much through this thing. And I can do this even a, which I haven't tested yet, I think it was a Chinese developed app that does remote play on iOS as well, uh, called oh, R Player. Cool. Haven't tried it yet. I've been mostly using my Vita for that, but I think the Vita may sadly be consigned to the grave if that works. Because I'm like, hmm, Vita screen or this giant fucking thing? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, obviously, you still need a base station of some sort. You need a PC or you need a console mm -hmm. to run the damn thing. But it's awesome that you can have one thing in your house and have it service every other display in the house if you have a good enough connections um right. so yeah hmm. blows my mind it's great i'm very much looking forward to playing some games and i don't have to worry about whether or not they're gonna get an ios port anymore like darkest dungeon it was actually motivated by darkest dungeon i wanted to play <laughs> that damn thing while I was away from my computer, and there's no iOS version for it yet, and the Vita version is out of date. They haven't patched it with the new stuff. So right. I can now do it through the streaming. Pretty cool. 
very cool. Yeah, so Moonlight's amazing. Uh, big up to all the open source developers that have made it that way. Apparently, you can even do 4K experimental with the fucking thing. Damn. Yeah, damn. <laughs> damn. Wow. Um, I think right now it outputs at 50 megabits a second across the Wi-Fi, which is actually really high. Like, that's good, uh, which is probably why it looks so good and it's so smooth. So big up to them for that. What else have we been playing this week? Dodger. I know you've been um, ex- rather busy, certainly. I've, I've been a little, a little bit busy, busy with the whole getting but, married thing and everything. Yeah, I um, I tried out Monument Valley 2, which mm. is gorgeous. Yeah, that came out of I, think, I think it's still only on iOS it as is, of right yes, now. Yeah. Um, but it's fantastic. Yeah. You uh, you play as the girl from Monument Valley and her daughter. Okay. Um. Yeah. Hey. Illustrate for you there. There we go. Yes. Visual aids. Go. What a podcast. Sorry, it's, carry on. It's so good. So just beautiful. And actually, yeah. I, I was thinking about it when we were talking about um people who don't really play games and how it's like really fun to to see them experience it. It's my I mother's know so favorite many people game. who have gotten their parents to start playing like yep. really mm. beautiful iOS games, right? Yes. So I'm getting my mom to play this one because I was like, this is just such a great example of something that's that's simple in a lot of ways and gorgeous and yeah. just like, man, I, I'm loving it so far. Yeah. Um, it's a flagship for so many things. Like it's a flagship that says iOS can be taken seriously as a platform, even though it's full of cash vampire junk every now yeah. and again something like this comes along that takes advantage of the control scheme rather than fights against it. It's, it's cool. And it's, it's one that, I mean, fortunately they're having good success with it. Apple supporting it a great deal. Like it yes. was in the, the conference. It was, yeah, they I launched was actually, it at, was at the, the conference. Say, say again, sorry. They launched it at the conference. Right they did. They I was at the, right um, I was at the launch party actually, which was like two days later Aww. in London. Um, Cause they're lovely people. Like you should at some point meet them. Um, they're really great. Um, and they they built like the the totem like life size and you can have a photo taken with it and all Aww. that stuff. It, but it's all that kind of all that stuff is the kind of it's nice that a game's doing well enough that on on iOS without being you know like you say a cash vampire yeah like it's 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 nice to see the good guys winning and that is definitely <laughs> yeah. an example of that and I like that so it's cool mm-hmm. yeah. Recommend it to anyone. Like I said, uh, it's great that you brought up the whole. It's something that you're, you know, people have been getting their parents to play because, yeah, my mm. mother played it and she absolutely loved it. When I told her it was the second one, she was overjoyed because she doesn't play all that many games. You know, she was being in a puzzle yeah. quest for a while. I did get to play Monument Valley and a couple of other puzzle games, but a lot of the stuff I do uh, send her way is a swing and a miss. And mm. she actually hates narratively driven games. Because I just thought, hey, you know, you'll be into something with a cool story. Hated them. Hated it. Mm. It's like, I don't uh, I don't play video games for story. That's what I read books for. Right. This was her response to that. And I was my like, mom that's is interesting. The same. Yeah. Yeah. My mom, my mom wants something that's that's visually pleasing and that um challenges her mentally. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um yeah. she wants stories for relaxing time. Yes. And she wants uh, like crossword puzzles and like any any kind of like puzzly thing is like her. I want to engage my brain. You put yeah. her onto threes, presumably, right? Like she's playing threes. She has she has I, played threes yeah. before. My mother's yeah. played threes okay. too and liked it. Yeah, I'm obsessed with threes. Threes are so good. As we, I I, be, I became an advocate for threes after seeing how many people were downloading like 2048 meme edition instead of threes. I'm like, I, <laughs> the world is dead. Just, yeah. we have failed as a human race. Uh, I'm, I'm just hoping as a kind of long tail that threes, you know, can continue to sell because, yeah, it mm. did get taken over by a ripoff. And I don't say mm-hmm. that lightly because I don't view the idea of taking other people's ideas as an inherently bad thing in video game development. In fact, it's essential to genre development. But when you make something yeah, it would that move is... half the speed if people didn't, yeah. Yeah, when you make something that is objectively worse, which 2048 <laughs> is, because it's easily solvable and not remotely elegant, and the presentation mm-hmm. is garbage, and then that's the thing that gets successful over the good game, yes, that pisses me off. I'm annoyed yeah. by that. So I will advocate it's a real, for It's a real risk. Time. I mean, 
it's it's definitely an issue when you make more minimalist games. Something like Threes is a game. And when that you takes, charge for it on mobile devices, that's also. Right. It. But Even it's so it easy to clone. That's the problem is it can take you a year to make a game of like threes. And I think it did take them a year because you're refining yeah. and coming up with the idea. Yeah, it's it a thing a they did have a puzzle juice, it. wasn't it? Yeah, it does. It does. You know, and you got mm. something that's free and also easy, which makes you feel smart, even though you're not, versus something mm, yeah. that is actually challenging and took three years to beat. I might add threes only. Yeah, just someone just did, right? Someone just yeah. posted on Twitter a while ago. Yeah, yeah they yeah. hit they hit the ending. It's great. Yeah, uh, but but that said, I wonder if anyone's even playing twenty four eighty eight anymore. Whereas threes is still going, so maybe at the in the end, the good guys do win on this one. <laughs> it's possible. Um. Yeah, Monument Valley is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, Monument uh, Valley. The other thing, uh, just finished a twenty four hour live stream of ton of uh, Final Fantasy, right? Ton of Final Fantasy fourteen. Um, mm. Just as a heads up for everybody who's watching right now, I I am being paid yes. to stream the game. Mm -hmm. um, I've I've been playing the game for years, but as of right now, I'm being paid to play mm -hmm. it. So yes. Um, but, Don't worry, I'm not. So I'll insult it. It's all good. Hey, there you go. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the new expansion pack, Stormblood, just came out. It has two new classes, which are samurai and red mage um so i've been leveling up a red mage it's interesting because you just you don't start from zero like you did with any of the other classes mm. um for anybody who doesn't know how final fantasy 14 works you really only need one character um one character can be every class can have every profession oh that's good um, you, yeah you don't have to swap characters so there's actually two different subscriptions you can like subscribe for i think it's 12 dollars, and that just gets you one character on every server or there's like a higher subscription that gets you more characters per server but you only need one because one character can do everything that's really good um so they kind of like built off of that idea with the expansion where um red mage starts at level 50 so okay. as long as you have a max level character that like a character that's max level in any other job, you can like approach the person that teaches you to be a red mage and they'll be like, oh, it seems like you have some arcane knowledge. Would you like to be a red mage? <laughs> right. Convenient. And then you start at level 50 with that class, um, hmm. which is kind of a cool concept. The, the rotation for it is really fun, I think. I haven't touched Samurai at all. I can't speak to Samurai, but Red Mage has been really fun because I've never really worked with DPS very much. I heal in that game. Mm -hmm. Mostly I'm a white mage. So, but yeah, I haven't I haven't jumped into the story yet. I'm really, really excited to because the way that Heaven's Word ended was was really cool. And yeah, I'm really excited. To so what were you doing for 24 story. hours then if you didn't jump into the story? Um, well, we were leveling, so we did Palace of the Dead, which is kind of like a built-in dungeon crawler. Um, it's a really good way, like, time per, per experience-wise, it's a really good way to level from 50 to 60. Okay. So, Sam hadn't finished Heaven's Word yet, and his next quest, he needed to be level 60, but he wanted to have his samurai at level 60, so we just did Palace of the Dead, uh, from 50 to 60. And then I did all. Of, wow I did my red mage me... quests, and he did heaven's word. And the time, yeah. the time actually uh, did not allow for as much as we thought it would. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly enough, but yeah, really excited that so many people are trying out the game for the first time. It's been heavily promoted. Cool. Um, mm -hmm. And when I hear that something starts at level fifty, there's that little part of my brain that I've been trying to suppress. <laughs> The MMO part of your brain, yeah. The deep, the deep down dead <laughs> part of you that <laughs> that yeah. loves fantasy based MMOs. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. What is the end game like in that now, like uh, to uh, especially with the expansion? So, it's it's one of the few like really successful subscription based MMOs right now. You know, I don't think that subscription-based MMOs are are a very popular concept. No, as of basically, right now. because I mean, let's be honest. WoW took it all. 
Like the, yeah. you could you couldn't run a subscription based MMO and also not be WoW. People uh, tried. God yeah. bless them. Old Republic, yeah. one of the most expensive games ever <laughs> fucking made, couldn't yeah. manage it with a Star Wars license. So what chance do you think you bloody have? But as it turns out, I was watching the No Clip documentary. They're, they're doing a, currently a No mm. Clip documentary. Yeah, That's such a good I show. Have, I haven't doing watched it. Good show. the Final Fantasy fourteen stuff yet. Apparently, it's awesome. Yeah, friend of the show, Danny O'Dwyer, has been on a couple of times. As now, it was in Japan doing No Clip, and it was like the death and rebirth of Final Fantasy fourteen. Mm. The first episode is like Final Fantasy fourteen was shit. We screwed up badly, and the second episode is like, here's how we rebuilt the Fixed whole it. thing from scratch. Mm. Yeah. and all that kind of thing and he said at the start of the second episode that this is now the second most popular subscription mmo like i think that maybe approaching three million subs mm. which wow. in a world where wow is stagnant that's impressive they... i guess cause it's unique right they went and didn't try and reproduce the same thing they did their own thing and made it work right so they um they try really hard to make sure that you know your money's actually going toward new content all the time. Um, after Heaven's Word was done, they were constantly, they always had plans for new story patches. There's tons of story that came out after Heaven's Word was released. Um, you know, there's raids, there's all kinds of stuff. And I think also because you can have one character that can do everything, um, it gives you so much to do. Right, even when you're done with the story, it's like okay, well, I have, yeah. I have all of these having side dungeons, I have all of these raids, but then I can also, you know, max level in any other thing that I can mm. think of. Um, so yeah. it it winds up giving you a lot to do. But they, yeah, with even with Stormblood having just come out, they're already like, all right, at this point, the the raid is gonna drop. Like our first big raid for Stormblood is gonna drop. At this point, you know, the extreme versions of these dungeons is gonna drop. Mm -hmm. Like they have all of that stuff planned out so that you know that subscribing to them, they are like working on stuff and they do have a plan to cool. you know and, they and they're learning from blizzard in that regard because blizzard has had uh particularly i think it was with warlords of draenor they launched the thing they're like yes expansion's great and they're like okay we've run out of content what's coming next and it's like deathly silence like they're just <laughs> it's like they didn't have a proper roadmap i've heard they've uh, done a lot better with legion <laughs> yeah they've done a lot better with legion in saying this is the roadmap this is what you can expect and you've got to do that because otherwise mm -hmm. people will get bored and sick of it and unsubscribe. You right. always have to have something to look forward to in a game that is constantly evolving like an MMO. And if that does sure. not happen, yeah, you get sick of it. Being there, done that time and again. Well, I've, I've talked about this with um, with Sam a bit because I think, I think a really common question, and it came up constantly during our streaming, is how does this compare to WoW? And I didn't play WoW a ton. Um, Sam played but a decent amount. Sam, yeah, Sam was saying that WoW still leads the pack in terms of PvP. Okay. Um, but but Final Fantasy XIV is constantly trying to revamp their PvP to make it better. Mm -hmm. Um, so apparently, apparently PvP like had a pretty decent overhaul with Stormblood. Um, so I've I actually did PvP for the very first time yesterday, and that was super fun. Um, so yeah, that's I've heard that from multiple people though. Is that like if you if you're really PvP heavy, then WoW is probably where you want to be. But um, but Final Fantasy fourteen is is constantly trying to make their PvP better and just like socially, like the way that they structure their free companies or like their guilds and stuff like that. They put a lot of focus on that. On like community building you know and like which is smart them. smart very smart as i can tell yeah. you for a fact from someone that played a bunch of wow and was on the verge of quitting multiple times the only thing that kept me from doing that was the commitment with the guild like the right. guild keeps like people the in the game the way. <laughs> it really does like they they make sure that you stay there because you're committed to them and you don't want to let them down and they make even the boring times more fun well, that was always the problem that, that other MMOs had was getting people to take their because you had to move your all your mates as well. You couldn't yes. just try the new thing, right? Yeah. And getting a like choosing which pub to go to on a Friday night is a challenge, right? Like taking your entire thing and resubscribing to, to a, a different, different game around. that they have to pay for. Yeah, I remember when we yeah. all, we all moved from Planet Side One to WoW, 
en masse. Mm. Our whole outfit did. And yep. we had sort of agreed to it months, uh, months. I actually sort of did it on a whim. I had no interest in it right until launch day. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to walk down the street and pick up a copy of World of Warcraft and see what happens. And, you know, five years later, <laughs> it was like when <laughs> I finally the same thing, the thing. It's the same problem consoles have just generally with their online yeah. component. Like people get their group of friends on either PlayStation or Xbox, it's very hard to get them to, to wow. move over. It's, and, you know, that could be easily solved if Sony weren't such a goddamn stick in the mud. As we found out quite recently, at E3, uh, one of the biggest things that was like, wow, these companies actually agreed to this, that's actually very surprising, was hmm. Microsoft and Nintendo saying, you guys can play Minecraft together. I was mm -hmm. like wow you are you are what that's unprecedented you know? and as a developer who knows the rules behind the scenes on that stuff because volume has an online component that's incredibly impressive I, I think it's one of those things where you have to be minecraft to get that from nintendo yes like, that's impressive well i mean mm -hmm. and it makes perfect sense you know it's a it's a game aimed at kids i mean it's the biggest property aimed at kids still sure. of course nintendo wants to be involved in that and considering nintendo's terrible approach to online yeah that's going to help them out somewhat and then, of course, what do we hear? That Rocket League has been trying to get everything cross-platform, mm -hmm. and the person, the people that are supposedly stopping them, is Sony. That they're they're saying, nope, uh, we're not going to let that happen. We're not going to let Xbox play with Sony. And their excuse for that essentially came down to, well, you know, so people expect that inside the walled garden of the sony and playstation experience that will protect them and that it will be safe and there'll be a certain level of control so i'm like you what there that is an issue of liability like and i think that I, I i see i know the same quote you're talking about there is an issue of liability though there is an issue of like if something bad happens to you who do you blame and i imagine there are complexities there not I, a full I, excuse, but yeah, I think there I would is... love to see that go to court. I mean, considering you have the whole Peggy rating where you don't rate the online component of a game because you cannot guarantee what mm. your experience is going to be, that seems tenuous to me. Mm. Uh, I would, I would like to see, you know, what that would realistically turn into, where that would go. I fair point. That's so very fair point. We'll, we'll see. You know, it's good to get the devs' perspective behind this, though, because I think as somebody who, you know, when either just YouTube as a regular game is, it's very easy to get angry at a big company and say, this is obviously a shit thing that you're doing. Blah, 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 blah. Get the sort of sure. pitchforks out. And then dev comes along and like, well, actually, there might be, there might be a reason. Maybe. I mean, it, you are, there is, there is always the danger of being sued, and that's a reality Absolutely. that every company yeah. has. Mm -hmm. um, right. And there is a responsibility on the people who are making the big choices to, to look after it and to make sure that we're not. But I can understand the frustration. Like, I'm not trying to jump yep. in too much on that one because like, oh. I get it. As a player, mm -hmm. as a developer, I get the frustration for sure. And on the subject of Final Fantasy XIV, that's a similar thing that's currently happening. The cross compatibility between the two platforms is possible. It could be done. You could have mm. Xbox players playing with PlayStation players playing yep. with uh, PC. Is there any current cross play or is it all separate? Um, I I'm not positive. Mm. I think I, I, I think PC no, players let's... can play with PS4 players, but um, I'm not let's find out. sure. Uh, I, I might be confused because they're um they've actually made it really intuitive to play the game with a controller. Mm. <laughs> so I know a lot of people that play with controllers and I yes, you can. think to my, you yep. can? Uh, yeah, okay. PC, PS3, and PS4 connect to the same servers apparently. Um, cool. But apparently PS3 won't be able to play once, uh, now that Stormblood's out, because Storm obviously it's a, it's a yeah. PlayStation 3, you know, mm -hmm. it, uh, you can't really blame them. Uh, is, is Final Fantasy 14 on Xbox? It is, right? No. I no. don't think so. Well, I mean, I that would explain why there's no crossplay. <laughs> it's like, damn, Microsoft. Oh, wait, it's not on your machine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but, uh, but you know, if it were it, you know, if it were, then there would be possible to do that. I, here's a question for you, Mike, as, you know, a developer. Oh, will, will it be on Xbox One X? I don't know. Anyway, I could. you could go look that up. I don't <laughs> know. Be. I don't, I don't understand. It's 4K. Mm, that, I I, I'd, I'd be happy with that. Because uh, yeah. fucking Elder Scrolls Online on PS4 Pro is still 30. <laughs> I was going to say, Xbox One X seems like a console that's going to kind of maybe pull you over a little bit more. Well, it won't because no. it, they literally, because all the games are on PC. <laughs> it's, it's the <laughs> thing that shot them in the foot. It's like, I might be an ideal uh, target for this if 
my games were not already available on my $8,000 PC, and that I can now apparently stream to my iPad in the basement, so I don't need the <laughs> Xbox. Fair point. Fair point. Where so you had a I, question. You wanted to ask me something. Uh, yeah, so, so the question was, like, on a, yeah. um, on a technical level, mm. uh, in your experience, just how much of a technical challenge is cross-play between, let's throw everything into the mix. Let's throw the everything. Switch in there every, as well. Every let's, throw, let's throw iOS in there. Let's let's make it <laughs> okay. as complex and horrendous as possible. How complex and difficult is that to implement on a game-by-game -game basis, do you think? So there's a few things. I mean, the first thing, obviously, is the political stuff that you're already talking about in terms of, like, do these things want to work with each other? Want to work with but other, putting yeah. that aside, just the technical stuff, um i guess the i guess the three biggest issues one is your game code um because obviously different devices you're running the game differently so your elder scrolls example is like it's 30 fps on a console but it's 60 fps on on pc getting uh stuff one of the biggest challenges in game development is to get stuff syncing up so you know yeah. when you do something we've all seen it lag we've all seen that would be a, a massive a shot, problem a shot, in PvP, yeah something not registering that, that kind nightmare. of thing so that's a challenge. And what's great about console, of course, is that you can always assume absolutely the same spec. Um, oh, well, <laughs> less and less as time goes on. <laughs> Not <but> anymore. <laughs> historically, that was always the yeah. benefit. Um, PC obviously always had to deal with more variation. Yeah. So there's that. Right. It's not It's not insignificant. Um, the next one is API stuff. So uh, it's your platform. So usernames, uh, trophy list, achievement lists, depending on what you're on. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens if, uh, you know, Total Biscuit on PC is a different player to Total Biscuit on PlayStation 4, and they're in the same place. Can you have them have the same name, even though they're on different platforms? There's weird stuff like that. That reminds that. You me, have do I have that for... name, or does someone else have it? <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember. I never but go so, online yeah. with PlayStation. I don't play so console games online. So there's some kind of, there can be some messy overlaps in that way. Mm. Again, a solvable problem, and most game development problems are solvable. There's very few impossible problems. It's just about basically money and time is always what it comes down to. Yeah. And then I guess the final one is a design problem, which is in is is it's similar to the to the first issue, the kind of technical differences, but design in terms of like uh, interaction. And the best example of this is FPSs. Consoles, PC, crossplay. Uh -uh. <laughs> exactly. And that's a big obvious example, but even in a situation where you've got a game that is basically best on controller on every different platform, yeah. there will still be differences in the controllers. There will be differences in lag. There'll be opportunities for people who want to cheat or to break that path a little bit to do so. Um, and then if you've got something like iOS in the mix, of course you have to account for that. Do you make it that there's like a handicap for players? That seems unfair. That's going to annoy as many people as it helps. So there's, yeah. there, so it's- Someone it's, tried got, that. Uh, do you remember back in the day uh, with the Xbox 360? Oh, uh, Shadow Run, right? Shadow Run, yeah. Where they're yeah. like, yeah, they tried that. They did Xbox 360 versus PC, and mm. they gave Xbox 360 an auto aim to try and compensate, and the PC users <laughs> still murdered them completely. For sure. It yeah. was a uh, complete I, failure. So those are your big ones: the the game code, the design, and then API, which. Oh my goodness, I've forgotten what API stands for. But it basically all the stuff that makes a platform specific to itself. So you can make it up and we wouldn't know. I'm just gonna let you know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, called yeah, the awesome right. protocol indicator. Sure. Um, yeah. Yes, that's that it. sounds right. Someone's gonna put it in the chat. It's it's application something, some interface, application yeah. something program interface, I think it is. Yeah. But um someone will put it, I'm sure five people will put it in the chat. Um but Oh, I'm right. It's application program interface. Awesome. You are a professional uh, programmer. Yay, I make video wow. games. And Real occasionally developer. I stream. Um, yeah, so those are the big differences. And, and none of them are unsolvable. All of them mm -hmm. are problems that can be dealt with if needed. Cool. Good to hear. I, uh, I, I think we're probably going this way, where eventually there will be cross-compatibility. I, I agree. I, I think like the, the, the boulder has started rolling down the hill now. I, I don't think it's stoppable at this point. There's developers want it, obviously, because it mm. makes sure their game community is healthy. I would imagine indie devs in particular want it because maintaining a healthy online community for an indie game is a massive challenge. How many it, multiplayer lobbies in indie games have you walked uh, into with no one there, right? It happens a on a one. weekly basis for me when I'm like, I'm going to look at this game. Hey, I should try the multiplayer. Um, so here's an example. Uh, Serious Sam's Bogus Detour. That supports up to 16 player deathmatch and like at least mm. four player, actually possibly even 12 player co-op or some crazy thing. Not a single lobby for any of it. 
So in order for me right. to test that multiplayer, I have to drag a bunch of other people in that are willing to actually pay for the game or get a free code for it. I'm like, shit, this fucked up. Uh, Invisigun Heroes, goddamn tragic. We'll promote that game to the end of time because it's amazing. But yeah. again, it's hard to convince people to buy into an indie game that's multiplayer focused, no, not knowing if there will be a player base tomorrow. The two big things they're helping with crossplay in terms of just kind of making it, I think, like I agree with you, it's an inevitable future. The two big things there are one, the architecture of platforms is becoming more similar. It's yeah. becoming easier and easier and easier to make a console game versus a PC game and to make those things interact in the way I mentioned with the game yeah. code, like making that stuff all feel about the same. The other thing weirdly that's a backdoor for this stuff is the iteration on consoles. This idea of consoles, like if I'm making an Xbox game now, I'm effectively making a game for three platforms, you know, the original Xbox One, the Xbox yes. One S, and um, now yeah. this Xbox One X. And it's like, that is, that's training developers into making stuff multi-platform anyway. Yeah, um, so it's more like they would be on PC. Reason. Like they'd yeah. have to, they're having to accommodate for that diff those different levels of power. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, that that's interesting. But I, I, th I think it, it's got to go that way. And I would say that pressure from everybody, developers, consumers, critics, YouTubers, on Sony and on Microsoft and on Nintendo to allow for this. Like, this is what we want. Mm. And it, it just seems to me like Sony's sort of like, we're king of the hill this time around, and we want to sort of jealously hold on to that. And it's like, look, the, way, the reason you're king of the hill has got nothing to do with the fact that everyone's stuck on your platform. You have a bunch of really good exclusive games, and Microsoft doesn't have as many good exclusive games and your price tag was better and mm. you know that you had some other cool stuff going for you don't force people to stay with your platform don't trap them in it mm. that, that's not the way to that's like maintaining your market dominance through stuff that's anti-consumer is not something i will ever support ever under any circumstances so mm -hmm. i'm hoping that sony eventually will just give in on that and compete on the level of we have a better system with better games and our online system's better and here's some free stuff and here's some cool features and functionality. That's what I want out of them. I hope so. Hope they'll stay with that. Also, why are you still not supporting the damn beta? People are still playing it. Why Don't look at me. I support right? the beta. Yeah. No, no one even mentions it. I got, like I got two games. I was on stage in, Ether, in Gamescom couple of years ago and i i i announced the vita version on stage i'm very good to vita i i bring my games to vita what and happened I, up to this point and people they literally well talk about Sorry. the vita like it's dead <laughs> and i'm like there's no there's games coming out every week so uh, they're, they're kind of niche you know there's a lot of visual novels a lot of j dungeon crawlers but there, there are games on a weekly basis uh did how well did your game sell on vita pretty well or uh, I they sold exactly well. Numbers. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, they sold well compared to other platforms, but I would say, honestly, my feeling with Vita was it was actually more of a PR win for us. If mm. I'm being completely honest, like I think um, the Vita community, the people who are still buying games on Vita, are super passionate. They love the platform, and they're right to. It's a great platform. I like the platform. Um, I think it's it kind one of the best handhelds ever made, frankly. Yeah. So they became evangelists for the game. The other thing for us as well was we made it all cross buy. So if you buy Thomas was alone on the beta you get it on ps4 if you buy volume on whichever yeah. you know all of it all of it plugs in and i think that i think that helped and it, and it actually means in a lot of cases we can't tell where you bought the game we get some information but like it just it just it's value for money right if i can tell you you can get this game on two places rather than one that's good right yeah so it's um I, we so yeah it, it was it wasn't i wouldn't say it was oh my goodness we we were made by vita but it's definitely helped i think and, and the audience yeah. is great so that's cool mm. glad to hear that yeah, I because it, it is it is an odd thing because as you said, Dodger, like people are acting like it's dead. The hardware's still out there and it's still yeah. good. I mean, even compared to the new 3DS, the Vita has a fucking incredible screen. It's Great got screen. two good proper control sticks. It's ergonomically laid out. It doesn't give you fucking hand cramps, and it's mm. still powerful to the point where you can get some really awesome looking games out of it. I went back and played a bit of. And obviously it's a 2D game, so you're like, well, that's a terrible example. But fucking <laughs> Raymond Legends on Vita is gorgeous. Mm. Oh, yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. I have the original one with the OLED screen before they did the other one. It's just the colors fucking pop. It's mm. so nice. We yeah. actually had a problem where when we did volume for Vita, 
um, the colors pop too much. We actually had to kind of dull it a little bit just because yeah. on a TV, obviously it's not quite as vibrant, like a normal, yeah. you know, TV, it's not as Contrast vibrant. Contrast ratio. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So we, so we, that's how good the screen is. We kind of had to pull it back a little bit, but yeah, it's a, it's a great platform and it yeah, is. I'm proud to have our stuff on there. It's, it's working well. Yeah. I, I, and I really do believe the only thing you need to sort of revive it is just announce a bunch of cool foot, uh, you know, maybe do a refresh on it, do the Vita 3000 or whatever. Um, update it a little bit as in mm -hmm. maybe put like a second set of uh, triggers on it i had to mm -hmm. buy this maybe a bigger screen something like that yeah, or better you know yeah i had to buy this goddamn hundred dollar kickstarter japanese case that um and it's very clever the way it does it um mm -hmm. when you do remote play it, obviously you only have l1 and l2 uh, sorry r1 so you're like oh mm -hmm. well how do you remote play well it uses the back touchpad to emulate this case just said what if we took a set of paddles and just had them come down and press the buttons and they're like, oh, that actually works perfectly. <laughs> Why the hell did Sony not release this officially? But getting it for the, they only did a limited run of them. Getting it for the mm. one thousand, they're a hundred dollars now. If you want, it, <laughs> if you want it for the the thin Vita, you can get it for like twenty twenty five, which is totally reasonable. But mm -hmm. like that added so much to me because I started playing Persona on the thing. I'm like, oh god, uh, bat baton passes on this. This is fiddly. Dashes on this. This doesn't feel good. Got the case. Right. This is a great machine. In I'm there day one, Vita two, day one, and might make something for it as well if they ever do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just think like you already have an install base, and I think that with the Switch sort of being like, we're kind of not a handheld. The totally. Switch is giving you the best option. Like the Switch is going to be, there's got to be some, yeah. Well, out of every other platform, right? Microsoft and Sony, I'm sure they're noticing the, the, the power of this thing. Yeah, not to mention the fact that the the idea sort of being in the industry, handhelds are dying, mobile took <laughs> yeah. over. No, it fucking didn't. It apparently did not because the Switch is selling like gangbusters and it makes me wonder how many people are using it as a handheld versus using it as a... I'd love to see some user statistics on that. Uh, we yeah, can get... that would be interesting. Um, here's some anecdotal evidence. Yay, the internet loves that. Dodger, <laughs> your, several people in your office have one. You have one as well. What would you estimate is the ratio between people using it in a handheld form versus a docked form? I would say 100% of people are using it docked. Yeah. Really? That's interesting. Because I, 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 I had to put, I had to work out how but, my dock worked the other day in order to play ARMS on it. Because I, because it was the portable Zelda device in, in my house. Right. Um, That's interesting. So I, I think that it's a combination of. Um, are they using com some kind of like a setup in order to uh, record it? Mm. Um, are they like, I don't like using it as a handheld because it hurts my hands, which I've said uh, a few times now. Yeah. Uh. So I prefer to use it docked always. Um, Gerard, I believe never takes it out of his office. I think it's pretty much always docked and Sam was using it handheld when he was like completely zoned in on Zelda mm. and wanted to just take it with him everywhere. But, um, as of right now, I think mostly just uses it for like a one-off game of Mario Kart. In Don't which you. case, he just leaves it hooked up to one of his monitors and switches the input. Mm -hmm. Switch owners in the chat right now. Straw poll currently running. Uh, vote on it. Portable oh, docked hey. or both oh, equally. Let's get a little survey of the... Oh, look at us with the technology here. I know. What I see an animal novel. I just need Wolf Blitzer to uh, get on the show right now. He can walk <laughs> me through the poll here. Let's uh, get you voting on that. Straw poll is in the chat. I'll post it again if you happen to miss it for the live viewers right there. Feel free if you're a podcast viewer to vote on this as well. I'll leave it up for a couple of days. Let's see. Let's get some information on this. It's straw, straw poll dot me slash one three three zero one two five three. That's one three three zero one two five three. I'll be interested to see by Thursday evening where we're getting results on this. At the moment, <laughs> uh, it's pretty close even hmm. yeah pretty close uh 35 saying portable 39 percent saying docked and 26 percent say they use both about equally but it's so smart of nintendo again just to be the boring dev in the conversation like for them they are cutting their r d costs in half in terms of compared to like having to make a handheld and a and a home console they're cutting their r d in half they're getting they're guaranteed support on both systems by every developer 
in say if you consider it as, as two systems in that way like it's a it's a really good consolidation for nintendo to make now mm -hmm. they have the popular handheld they have a history of a popular console the wii u maybe didn't do so well but they have some some history there to bring that all into one place it was it's super smart and it seems to be working for them and as like if that if that straw poll stays in the same place like that's that shows that essentially they've made two consoles for the price of one that's yeah that's great that and that is very interesting because that I as I assumed that most people would use it portably, but from mm. what you're sell telling me, Dodger, is it's not actually that good an experience to do. Well, just I mean, just for me, I well, don't. I mean, you're I not don't... the first person to say it, certainly. Yeah. Uh, I and I mean, with the size of my hands, I'm not sure what that's going to do with me either. I... Well, yeah, because it's like you and I agree that the Vita is really nice ergonomic. to hold. Yes. Really ergonomic. nice to play on. Like it mm. just feels right. The Switch does not feel right to me. It feels really odd. So. Been, uh, the, there's not been a Nintendo machine that I've liked the controls of since the Game Boy Advance, I think. Which right. one? They were like the original the SP. Game Boy Advance. The SP. Oh, the SP. The SP. The SP was a beautiful, a wonderful little machine. It was lovely. It was still little, on one of the house. clamshell one, right? Yep, still on one in the house. I remember buying it and playing like I still have mine. <laughs> Doom and Duke Nukem. And there was some cool fucking games on that thing. Thank The emulation scene for that is excellent. So, you know, you can pick up some really good stuff on that. Uh, mm. I mean, fucking Golden Sun is a classic, no doubt. Uh, but the ever since then... Every handheld they've made has been uncomfortable to me in some way, mm. uh, which is a concern. I wonder why that is. I wonder if it almost sounds like, hey, wonder if they're changing like towards, like they're aiming them towards kids, not adults or whatever. Uh, but mm. it's not like they weren't aiming the fucking Game Boy towards kids. You know, it's. I just, I just right. don't understand what happened with Nintendo's ergonomics. It went batshit i think around is the it just N64 the case era. that everything else got much better like maybe, is it maybe just people got talk, better we talked it. about nostalgia earlier right like right. if you think back to like the contemporaries of the game boy advance like you're talking i mean playstation one controller was also awesome but like it was always awesome from day one but the xbox controller like that kind of stuff like the, big, the original the, one yeah the original one the big fat they're remaking those by the way because some people I really saw, like yeah, the big like fat a, controllers I actually might buy one yeah the huge things might be good whenever worth it just for nostalgia Whenever I try to hold an N64 controller, I'm like, when did this I ever this? feel right? <laughs> that stick in the middle. I remember like work? getting totally used to it. But mm. when I try to hold it now, I'm like, this is, man, I hate this. Yeah, I, I, I going back to uh, the Dreamcast, uh, I now have issues with the Dreamcast stick, you know, because I'm used to much better analog stick design yeah. now. Right. So, that, you know, that, that's not great either. But... Yeah, maybe they have just been surpassed in that, but again, they just keep making... They can make good controllers. The Wii U Pro is, is a good controller, and I like the, the screen controller as well, the big, the big fat thing with the screen there. That, that worked well for me. And but, for all its flaws, the, the Wii controller is arguably the reason the Wii sold as well as it did, right? Not, oh yeah, totally. not necessarily yeah. as popular with people like us, but like in terms of broadening the audience, semantically, that was a great controller, right? Yes, yeah, I would, I would say so. But yeah, that is a concern for the Switch, and... Up to this mm. point, nobody has announced a third-party set of Joy-Cons, which makes me wonder, is that something Nintendo is even going to allow, or can anybody mm. can anybody make them? Because does everyone know what the tech inside these things is? Is it possible for someone to replicate it? It's also right. non-standard, isn't it? It's not like yeah. a regular controller where you plug it in with like a USB-C cable and you're away. Like This, yeah. is, this is something... Yeah, it's very bespoke. proprietary. Yeah. Mm. Um, I kind of hope that Nintendo does allow for it because I'm sure uh, someone like uh, Hori or some of the other good controller manufacturers or third-party dudes could come up with something that wouldn't be horribly uncomfortable to use. Sure. You know, that for people that don't mind the aesthetic, I think that that's a lot of it. It's like Nintendo is obsessed with this has got to look like a Nintendo machine. For me, it's like, I will happily have a controller that sticks out like a fucking sore thumb on either side of this thing. As long as it feels good, I'm totally okay with that. Spoken so, to like a true PC game. Absolutely. <laughs> as many hideous controllers as we can get. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, just before we go to a break, we'll take a quick break and then come back with uh, quick news and releases just so we can wrap up on time. There was the, the first ever analog mechanical keyboard is almost out, the Wooting One, which... Okay. 
measures the pressure of each key press so that you can use it just like an analog stick and also has built-in emulation for xbox like input so hmm. it, a, you, a key press can then emulate an analog stick they demonstrated it with burnout paradise so you can finally play a driving game where you're not just tap 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 you know in order to turn yeah. so you right. can just press it wow lightly i think that is probably the future of gaming keyboards right that's like, a tough engineering challenge to get that yeah, yeah i am yeah. i've got my uh mine is so i think i, I did kickstart it or, or what, indiegogo it a while ago and i'm very curious when mine arrives to see how well it actually works mm. because you would think that's probably the way gaming keyboards will go in the future if it's cost effective to do so that was the one disadvantage that a keyboard really had you take that away and suddenly it's like this is the best controller like without a doubt really for all this stuff mm. yeah that'll be fascinating yeah i'll i'll let you know how it works when mine eventually arrives i think it's coming Intriguing. out within the month i'm very curious to see what goes on with that all right we're going to take a very quick break just a few minutes and then when we come back we'll cover the news because there has been some nintendo related news and a few other things that we're going to cover and the brave few the happy few the band of brothers that actually decided to release this week during the steam sale we'll see what happens we'll be right back for the break folks you're watching the co-optional podcast don't go anywhere ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the co-optional podcast all right we're gonna dive sorry hi what was that music that was just playing it was a different version of persona 4 uh main battle theme okay Uh, i was like this sounds like persona music yes yeah, there's but actually some variants it. on it. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's uh, it's the one where they they sort of replace the chorus with the with just an instrumental version. There's a couple of different variants on. It's called "Reach Out for the Truth," which is awesome. Uh, but I will say, it does get a little bit grating after eighty fucking hours of gameplay. <laughs> uh, this is like, oh, that's the one thing Persona has an issue with. It's like, I like this music, but oh my god, you are actually drilling it into my brain right now. It's if, like. Yeah, if you get to a a point where you're like, man, I'm kind of under leveled, and it's really hard to beat these guys, and you it takes a while to get through an area. It's like, oh man, that definitely happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, I love this music. God, the aesthetic of this place is so cool. And by the end, you're like, I would be so happy if I never saw any of this shit ever again. I- I'm gonna be yeah. entirely honest. I bought a bunch of like six dollar costume dlc for that game because it comes with the music from persona 3 persona 4 battle theme persona 4 dlc all night so i change the clothes every like hour or so to change the battle theme Amazing. and that's what happens you get whatever battle theme that your main character's uh, outfit is so like yeah um hmm. i just paid 18 dollars not to be pissed off at the game <laughs> <laughs> like i am a fucking sucker that's- Oh Jesus! They knew I'm gonna it. Make a note. That's useful. I'm gonna use that. Nope. So, you do that, and I am 18, you. Eighteen dollars. You said you played. Okay. <laughs> I oh, hate you so much. Yeah, Go yeah, on. It's good. It's good. That's getting brought. Up. That's a gym acquisition waiting to happen right there. Mike Biffle's terrible psychological torture practices selling hey, DLC at the game dev parties. If you've not had a gym acquisition video about how much of an asshole you are, they they shun you at those parties. You're not cool. I believe like, that. It's a coming of age thing. It's coming absolutely yeah Yeah, that that sounds about right so uh, we're gonna dive into (laughs) some quick news Uh, first probably biggest news this week of course is the mini snes they it's been rumored for quite some time Uh, nintendo uh, has announced that there will be a mini super nintendo in the same style as the mini nintendo which they made about eight of and then yeah, Scalpers I was going to say, is it going to be as short of a run as... Uh, now, apparently name? not. Uh, according to yeah. various sources, they may have learned their lesson. I don't believe that for a second, considering the continued Switch shortages. But this is a $90 system this time, rather than the 50 Comes with two controllers. The cables are four feet, not two feet, which is still a little short. <laughs> I, so it's a good selling point our cables are four feet rather than two feet yeah wow. yeah so okay. uh, any any third party uh, is just because everybody uh, rubbing their hands in glee to be able to sell some extenders and then realize there's only 10 of the systems so mm. they made no money on them uh the pre-orders for the machine were already sold out in the uk i don't even know if they ever came on to the us amazon if they did they were sold out pretty damn fast uh sorry i think it's 80 dollars, not 90 but yeah, four or five feet, which, again, still a little short. I think 10 feet would have been better. Uh, yeah. It's like, oh, double the Super Nintendo users units versus the NES Classic. Oh, so 20 of them then. All right, great. That Sure, that'll be lovely. But I the... Still, I still do not understand what the logic was because their excuse was, well, this 
the NES was only supposed to be a holiday thing, mm. but we extended it. So really you got Cheap. more NESs than you were going to. <laughs> and then followed it up with, and we really want to let you guys know we're listening to you and we really appreciate the feedback. So we're not going to sell these anymore. And it's like, but our feedback was that it was awesome and they're sold out <laughs> everywhere. So I don't understand what's going on. Yeah, it, it, that I, was pretty ridiculous. I don't trust anything. Yes. You're right not to trust anything. Uh -huh. Thank you. You're right. That's the right position to take, I think. I agree. Cool. Yeah. I, I agree, uh, because the rest of your terrible wedding box just arrived, according to Amazon tracking, so definitely don't trust anything. I, st <laughs> I stepped outside to see if I could find a snack, and there's just, like, five boxes right outside my door, and I was like... I fucking cannot wait. <laughs> I really outdid myself on how terrible this is. Anyway... <laughs> The the big news on this thing is probably the game's lineup, which I might add is stellar. Like, there's not a bad game on it, whereas it's the... It's even got an exclusive, right? Yes, yeah, so Star Fox 2, the mm. mystery of Star Fox 2, a game that was, by all accounts, completed. They didn't release it because of the N64's upcoming release. They're like, uh, we're just going to oh, cancel okay. it. Uh, because <laughs> we we want people to buy an N64 and they won't if we keep releasing good games on the Super Nintendo. Weird. Nintendo, you're strange. Mm. Uh, so that will that will be on it. And the rest of the lineup is like these are this is a who's who of this is fucking great. Like you've got Mario Kart, you've got Super Mario RPG, you've got oh. Super Mario World, you have Contra Three, fucking Contra, love it. F Zero's on it. Uh, Earthbound is on it. The, the only thing which seems to be conspicuous by its absence is Chrono Trigger. I was gonna say Chrono mm. Trigger. Is that on there? Yes. Chrono. Was, it is not. Was Chrono Trigger originally on Super NES, or was it ported to Super NES? Super NES was its starter platform. Yeah, that that was where it was initially. Uh, it. I'm just sort of seeing what the rest of the lineup is on it. I mean, they're all good. Like, there's not a even what you game. listed. Like, because I never played Mario RPG, that kind of got my attention just for that. Yeah, I actually didn't either. Uh, mm. Links to the Past is on it. There's two good Kirby games on it. Superstars. Mm. On I would it. love to play Secret of Mana again. That's on there. Yeah, I think, I think that started on Super NES. Yep, it's on there. It's on the list. Uh, Castle Super Castlevania Four, Street Fighter Two Turbo, Super Ghouls and Ghosts. It's a who's who of these are all incredible. Like, it's Donkey a real shame that none of us will Jesus. own this, or anyone in the chat will own this. Right? Well, like, I will because oh, I snagged no. one on UK as soon as it went up. <laughs> Damn it! I, I will sell it on it. eBay for five thousand dollars. No, I will not do that. I, I actually know bought it because I thought it would be a when neat they did the NES, birthday present for my brother. Everything. Oh, sorry, go on. I, I, I only, I actually only uh, bought it because I thought this will be a neat uh, birthday present for my brother because his uh, birthday's in September. Hmm. I might steal it myself, but I don't know. It, a lot of people are like, well, you can just get the retro pie and stuff. You can. I mean, uh, you absolutely can build a a box for that amount of money with a Raspberry Pi 3 that will absolutely play all of these games and you can mm -hmm. download every other game and all sorts of other stuff. Mm -hmm. You can absolutely do that. But the attraction of this thing is obviously that it's quite collectible. It looks like it's a small Super Nintendo. It's a tiny SNES, yeah. Yes. It's a handle SNES and you plug it in with an HDMI and go. There's no setup. Yeah, it's a very limited device, but it's also stuffed full of really fucking good games. Uh, like I said, this is why it's dumb that they're not making a lot, because these are ideal gifts. I would give these yeah. to friends, family members. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a perfect nostalgia gift. And they knew gift. that. It's an education. They, yeah, They it put is. the NES out as a holiday special, apparently. Yes, they were so completely they knew exactly what type of thing we would want to buy them for. It's mm. just weird. Yeah, it's... Uh, hopefully they don't do that. So in the US, I don't believe they put pre-orders up on Best Buy and Amazon yet. So people saying, oh, it's all sold out. Well, in the UK, yes, right now anyway, but they haven't put the pre-orders up on in the US yet. And when it comes to hardware pre-ordering, especially with Nintendo, is unfortunately something you have to fucking do because otherwise apparently you'll never get it. But I might have to do some shenanigans and get one now. I want to try one. It, it's, yeah. It, By shenanigans, do you mean murder a guy? I mean murder take, a guy. And take I mean, his murder SNS. a guy. Yeah, okay, that's, cool. that's, that's what I mean. Yeah, I, mean, John I just want to make sure I'm no. reading between the lines yeah. correctly. I, I, I have I have a Warhammer and several swords. I am I am a true neckbeard. You cannot enter. <laughs> trust me. You shall not pass. You do. I mean, you've got quite a few starships to your left. 97. There, think, to your yeah, right. Yeah. Yes. 
Is that the one that was the magazine collection? Right? Yes. Or it's, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that in Forbidden Planet every time I'm in there. I'm like, no, Mike. You got to start from the start, man. Yeah, you got to. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a good <laughs> ship, but yeah, it's it's a it's a nice little unit that yes, you can build a retro pie for cheaper and run everything on it. But ultimately, the you know the people that want this are not doing that. Mm. That it's not it's not for the same people. It's not it's like, oh, this is the only way to play retro games. Fucking no, of course it isn't. We get that. We understand that It might that be the concept. best way, genuinely, in 2017 to play them, right? Like, Maybe. Uh, at least if possibly. all you want to do is play those ones. And yeah. I I would imagine within about five minutes, somebody's hacking that fucking thing <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. and getting it to run whatever on it. Uh, but, you know, 80 bucks for some of the best games of all time and two controllers and a nice little unit that plugs in via HDMI. Sure. Cool. Yeah. I don't object to that. I think it's neat. Like I say, mm. hopefully they're producing enough of the fucking things. Uh, moving <laughs> on. So uh, onto some sort of bad news, just as more of a recap of the situation more so than anything else. Some people have probably been hearing about a nasty DMCA madness towards a bunch of YouTube gamers over the past week or so, uh, caused by a video game composer called Alex Mauer. She has DMCA'd over 70 channels, if you can 70. believe. 70? Yeah, I have the list of all of the channels that she, this Jesus has affected. Christ. Over 70. And something we haven't really talked about, a bunch of Twitch streamers also got hit by this. And Twitch, the way Twitch reacts to a DMCA is to ban the channel for 24 hours, even in the middle of a stream. So Hyper RPG was one of the first affected by this and was not the only one. So we just don't really hear about that because when you copyright strike a video, it goes down and puts a clear message up that says this happened. So it's like, what's going on with that? But with a Twitch stream, it's not as obvious. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm trying to think if there would be a better way to do that. But it's like, if if it is a legit DMCA, which DMCA, it is, then they have, have to, to just make sure the person can't stream, right? Like that's, I don't know how else they could do that. Anyway. Mm -hmm yeah it's uh, yeah i mean obviously you could cut the stream uh you have to take it down immediately otherwise you know comply with the mca safe harbor rules uh but you know the 24-hour ban that has re you know that re has real lasting consequences on it and mm. obviously copyright striking youtubers does as well and unfortunately it's a it's a stupid dispute because ultimately the contract is public we've seen it this person clearly doesn't own the rights to any of the music because they was working under a work work for hire agreement so all of the rights were given to the company that hired her uh so she has no right to issue these things and it seems like it's been done maliciously simply to try and do damage to the company in question there's a bunch right. of innocent people that are getting caught in the crossfire here and the it seems like i just don't uh, who do you think you are gonna get sympathy from here I, it, she in emails that we've seen she is quite literally saying that she wants people to redirect the complaints to the company they're not going to do that they're complaining to you because you issued the strike they're not going to go and complain to the company Imagos Softworks have nothing to do with this like this is not their fault they didn't issue a single copyright strike to anybody nobody's being fooled by that it's really important that people realize that Imagos is not at fault for any of this and whatever dispute they have between them is private it's got nothing to do with us as youtubers it has nothing to do with twitch streamers at all it's nonsense yeah. they're they're no. two different like connected but different yeah parts of it yeah mm -hmm. uh, it's utterly unjustifiable it's ridiculous so I'm actually having a meeting with YouTube after the show to hopefully get this stuff sorted uh, because a bunch of people got affected by it. And what can you do as a little channel when that happens? Well, not a great deal. You can issue a counter notification and hope that that works out and that YouTube doesn't mess around, which right. hopefully everybody has done right now. I'm hoping it should get it should get back up. I believe uh, lawyer Leonard French, who actually has a YouTube channel and does some really cool streams, uh, copyright really lawyer, good. yep, really good. is now Never representing. You should. Software. you should yeah it's now you like two and a half hour videos about uh, copyright law it's good i do and i, I do. love that shit. yeah i do like that's <laughs> I, I think you may i think you yeah. may have put <laughs> i wasn't being sarcastic i genuinely do love his stuff yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i he's apparent i believe he is now representing 
the company Amigos against Alex Mauer. Like, so okay. she is going to court now, and it looks like for entirely justifiable reasons. Mm. Uh, there's actually a statement out on LeonardJFrench.com right now about it. So good for Leonard French for taking that case, and make sure you win it, because if you don't, you're going to set some really bad precedent for YouTube. Was, yeah, we I'm might be screwed here. <laughs> yeah, so please don't. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's ugly and it sucks. And mm. again, I'm just genuinely concerned for this person because I don't think they're in the right place right now. They're not thinking clearly. This is a self-destructive path. So I hope that she gets well after this. All right, moving on to something a little bit less depressing. So Hearthstone has been receiving a lot of criticism as of late, as has Overwatch, for just how expensive the microtransactions are. And That's, uh, They've always kind of come under fire for that. Yeah, and Hearthstone in particular, just in, it's like, oh god. It, and the problem recently was that Hearthstone increased the number of legendaries that was in the expansion, and a lot of them are very, very viable. And the acquisition of legendaries, as you might be aware, is very, very difficult. Very difficult. It costs a lot of money to get all of them. I know this because for expansion after expansion, I got all of them. And it was like, if you wanted to just buy the packs and get enough dust to craft everything, and if you were not particularly lucky about it, you were looking at 300 to about $400 per expansion. And it got worse with the latest one. And people were like, this is, I've had enough of this That's bullshit. too much, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for those who don't play Hearthstone, if you get a duplicate legendary, you can disenchant it for dust, which is a currency you can use to craft any card in the game. The problem is, a duplicate legendary disenchants to 400 dust. You need 1,600 to craft a legendary. So getting a duplicate legendary is a painful thing. Mm. They also increase the price of the packs in the UK, which was not welcome, obviously. However, looks like they have listened finally and have backed off on it because it is now going to be impossible to pull a duplicate legendary from a pack, mm. which is very good. That That is something that other games have been doing, not allowing you to pull duplicates of cards that you can't use. Looks like... Finally, I guess maybe because they might have seen a fall in player base or just they were listening to their player base, they decided, yeah, okay, we're going we're gonna to prevent that from happening. They mm. also are apparently drastically increasing the drop rate of legendaries in Overwatch crates. You can still get duplicates, supposedly, which still sucks, but you will get more legendary items from that. That's cool. Yeah, that's good. It it is very nice. good. I'm less concerned about Overwatch because it's all cosmetic bullshit. But in Hearthstone, it's like you need these to play and win. So that's mm -hmm. a bad thing. I respect them weighing the weighing <laughs> weighing the dice in the players' favor. That's always that's always cool when you can do that as a developer. It makes sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, the Hearthstone changes begin next expansion. So don't go buy a bunch of cards right now and packs believing <laughs> that it's in there. It's not in there yet. It's when does coming. the next expansion drop? Do we know? Uh, I mean, I've got to be honest. I don't. I don't follow a Hearthstone anymore, really, as I stopped playing about six, six months ago. So I'm not sure yeah. uh, when that when that happens. So, but it is happening. So maybe hold off a little bit until that actually happens. I'm going to assume it happens retroactively as well. I hope it does. Do we know that? Because that would be good. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I'm hoping it applies once this change happens to the stuff in the previous expansion, because you're going to need that stuff as well. Yeah. Not sure. Hopefully. It's it's better. It's pro more pro-consumer. That's good. I don't think anyone can argue otherwise. Yeah. Cool. Is there anything else on the news front that we would like to have a quick look at. I'm just looking through my list of stuff. because right. There's a Steam summer sale with some great indie titles. Real? In God damn it. <laughs> Shameless plugging to Electric Boogaloo, apparently. Thomas was learning volume, both 75% off. I remember reading that on news site. Oh, earlier. wow. Interesting. I had no idea. They're great games, I've heard. Um, They're available on consoles, uh, iOS, all that stuff. But you should buy them on PC because they're 75% off in the Steam sale. Thomas was alone in volume. Oh, interesting. I just I can't remember where I read again? it. It was on... Thomas was alone in volume. Those oh, were the, I think okay. those were the names. Yeah. Sure. 
Sorry, John, do, do you know any news about anything else? Or? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I refuse to be involved in this charade. This <laughs> charade. I know your game and your games, and I refuse to participate. It's nonsense. Uh, uh, there was a couple of updates on Open 4 a few days ago, which I'm still a bit eh about. The, so, the, as you might be aware... Nasty, horrible cease and desist sent to Open 4, which a lot of GTA 4 and 5 modding was based on. And took that offline, and people were not happy, myself included. Now, supposedly, but we really don't really know this yet, uh, Open 4 got updated a couple of days ago, signaling that development on this will continue, and Rockstar issued a statement saying they were talking to the lead developer of Open 4 which is probably something you should have done before threatening them with legal action. Uh, mm. Maybe. And before getting review bombed in every way ever, that mm. that would probably be good. Like They did get nukes on the reviews, right? They Almost got it. destroyed. Uh, yeah. You know, this is an overwhelmingly positively rated game that went down to overwhelmingly negative in recent and went to mixed. Bear in mm. mind, this is one of the most popular games of all time actually getting enough negative reviews to push it down that far is a big deal so that mm. was that was rough really rough i am gonna wait and see on this honestly because we keep hearing about it. it's like oh modding's fixed now y yeah but is it because there's <laughs> nothing stopping take two from doing this again there is no guarantee that it will not happen again and there's no giant hey everything's back statement they're it's very like, it's very risky situation right because modding always exists in a very legal gray area yes it does just yeah. to be that guy again like yeah. so i do understand i mean it should never have happened is the short version right but like yep. there's i understand why they can't announce it's okay mod as much as you like that they can't do that so yeah it, it it's honestly they should just not have tripped up in the first place yeah mm. it was extremely stupid knowing the history of modding with gta and when your business practices are so obviously oriented towards selling bullshit virtual currency in your online version and you don't make any single player DLC, mm. people are going to suspect that you're kneecapping modding so <laughs> that you can sell more shark cards. That's no. a relatively logical con conclusion. That's isn't not it? real. Yeah, sure. That's just a conspiracy theory. Fucking right. Yeah. Okay. So when I see a real commitment from Take-Two and Rockstar, and Rockstar is a subsidiary of Take-Two, don't treat them as separate entities, then I will say we're out of this shit show. I don't think we're out of this shit show yet. Not even mm. close. So that needs fixing. Mm. Not great. Outside of that... And the only other news was uh, Quake Champions is going to be on Steam. They're not going to force you to use the Bethesda launcher. Oh, that's nice okay. of them. Which, okay. yeah, uh, I think they wanted more than nine players. So they decided <laughs> we'll put the thing on Steam. And it's a tough call because, especially if you're a large publisher these days, the question that I imagine a lot of people are asking, including by no means least the shareholders, is why are we giving 30% to a competitor? every time we sell a game why can't right. we just do it ourselves which is of course what blizzard successfully did what ea pseudo successfully did what ubisoft has created a hell spawn of a client to do and <laughs> bethesda launched one relatively recently as well they actually launched it with the pc version of fallout shelter to promote it i don't imagine that worked very well because it sucks but mm. they put Elder Scrolls Legends on there and their other games, of course, and they said, hey, we're going to put Quake Champions on it as well. And we even saw recently the announcement that Destiny 2 on PC will be sold through Battle.net. Or, sorry, the Blizzard app. <laughs> oh, never, ever, ever going to call it that. <laughs> yeah. But I'm glad to see... I mean, as, as a user, I'm glad to see that because I think the health of the player base in a game like that is a priority. Mm. I would not yeah. like to see it die just because nobody wants to play because not on Steam. That sucks. I do think you're going to continue to see... I think the next step is going to be mid-tier publishers trying the same thing. 
and I think that's going to frustrate a lot of players. Mm. But it's yeah. a lot. I think a lot of people are having the thirty percent conversation, as you put it. You know, like sure. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, it's a case of Steam is in a very strong position in the market to the point where it's just bigger than everything. It's not yeah. a monopoly, but it's an effective monopoly in terms of when people say I'm going to buy a Steam, when I'm going to buy a PC game. Yeah, I even said it myself. Fuck. Uh, like, instead of saying I've got to buy a PC game, I said I'm going to buy a Steam game. That's how <laughs> fucking powerful that brand one of is. Us, yeah. One, one of us, yeah. 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 And it's... I wouldn't dream as a dev- I wouldn't dream of, like, ever releasing a PC game that wasn't on Steam, like, or fighting hard to get it onto steam i mean now obviously you don't have to open up yeah, yeah. exactly but like it's crazy yeah yeah i there's very few games that succeeded without it but i you know there are companies like mojang they're like i'm fucking glad i didn't put my game on steam because that's the percent more money that i got there but mm-hmm. uh, and of course riot games and pro- you know uh war gaming with world of tanks you know there's some free-to-play games that just have their own launchers that yeah. worked relatively well but for you the have most to make part, literally the best games ever. Yeah, the most popular Steam. games of all time. Yeah, to get. I'm to definitely in the second that. list. I think, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> it, I I'm less sort of I, I object less to separate clients than some people seem to. Some people are so vehemently anti having anything other than Steam that it seems irrational to me. It's like, mm. but I don't know where my games are. <laughs> what? You don't know where your games are. Are you sh- Do you own so many games that you forget? I don't mm. forget. And I own 2,000 video games. Come on. It, and also, you're on a PC, you can put shortcuts on your desktop. You don't need to remember where it is. Like, you, you also, you can you install your Windows one program at a time. Uh, launcher, couldn't you? You could I, do that. You could uh, do that. You won't. You wouldn't, but you no, could. No. Um, yeah. I, yeah. Choice is always good, though, right? Choice is if people, you know, people yeah. should be able to go where Being they able to go. choose where you can buy a thing is good. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I don't think anyone's going to question that. Uh, does, I question the vehemence of some people with the insistence <laughs> of, if it's not on Steam, I'm never going to buy it ever. Blah, 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 blah. Like, that's a little unreasonable. Like, you're handing a monopoly to Valve on a silver platter at that point because of your unwillingness to buy something that's not on Steam. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit... Ugh. It's uh, always better for the consumer to weigh your options absolutely. and to have more options yes. available to you. Yes, yep. So this is a good thing for them as well. And honestly, there are other ways to get people to use your launcher, incentivize it with things. You know, it's what uh, GOG have been doing with Galaxy to get users there. Don't force mm-hmm. people into it. Incentivize them to do it and yeah. make More it good. More carrots, less sticks. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Battle.net in particular is a pretty pleasant client to use. And the friend system i like better than the steam friend system if i'm going to be honest with you and i do Same. a lot of communication through it's it. it's so much more intuitive it's yep. way cleaner yep yep so you want to get people to use your client make you know build a better mousetrap put some really cool features in it that people are not getting through steam and then that build a better work. mousetrap but then make sure that it's not really a trap and yes that they can <laughs> the make sure all the mice are really happy and treated <laughs> yeah, well make and sure that all of the yes. mice walk in and but maybe don't, don't want to leave but if they do want to leave make sure there's a they're door they're more than welcome to do that <laughs> <laughs> so not really a trap of any kind but we want we want a mouse friendly mousetrap yes absolutely here, right? yeah yeah it's a it's a mouse <laughs> communal the meeting area. It's a mouse yeah. retirement community. No, yeah. is what that's we want. The, I, I imagine many of those are mostly like prisons as well. So let's not do that. <laughs> okay, no, no, maybe not go with that. No, <laughs> <laughs> don't take my advice. I'm very stupid. Just want to let you know. Oh dear. Cool. Shall we hit up releases? Yeah, let's do that, and then we can wrap the show up right on time, shall we? Right. All righty. There's no so, lot here, so this should be quick. Our first one for the day is Gus Track Adventures VR. Oh, my. Um, oh, sh- uh, so I've just realized something. What? They broke the search box with the Steam sale, and they never fixed it. Yeah, you can't. You have to let, yeah. Um, it's obnoxious. Crap. <laughs> so, this is a problem why have they not fixed this yet um should we just like glance through and see which ones we know danganronpa we know what danganronpa is i guess uh, i'm just googling uh it's like you can still search no they didn't fix it i'm trying right now it doesn't work you can you can type it in and hit enter and it'll still take you to what it thinks you want Ah. Uh, 
Okay, I'm gonna try this. So this there we go. This is making me feel very sad right now. So you now. have to hit that and then <laughs> click the thing. Yeah, so you can't click the search thing anymore to do that, and it doesn't come up with the automated list like it used to. All right, but right. you can hit enter and then click the thing. Okay, that's a pain in the dick. Fix it. All right, great. Le okay, yeah. so here we go. Gus Track Adventures VR. It looks like it's a game where you're on rails and you shoot things, and it's kind of cute. Yeah, kind of cute, but yet yeah. another freaking VR game of on rails stuff. Uh, uh, next up is Danganronpa, another episode. It's Ultra Despair Girls, isn't it? Ultra Despair Girls. That's been yes. out on Vita for quite some time. I I haven't played this, but a warning, it is not the same as the other two Danganronpa games in the way it plays. It is not mm. the visual novel, solve the mystery thing. It's got some shooter elements and some weird stuff on it. Yeah, so, it's more of an action game. Yeah, right? it seems to be this is not a game you should be getting if you haven't played the other Danganronpas because you won't get anything out of it. It's sort of right. more of a fan y ish spin-off thing. Uh, I haven't played it yet, I must admit, but... Yeah. It's good that it's on PC. Uh, the, on, the other two Danganronpas are on PC as well. Um, the Golf Club 2 is a, a golf game. I am shocked to hear that. I know y'all are <laughs> shocked. <laughs> is it the it... sequel to another golf game? It, I it, assume it's possible. So. Yeah, yeah, it might. You'd might, hope so, right? Otherwise, yeah. that's the a misleading golf club title. one. Right? You'd hope you know, so, right? Yeah. Has yeah. that? That's been done before with a, a as a marketing ploy. I think in film, oh, like pretending that there's an pretending original... there was a first one. There was yeah. an indie game did it right, where it was like they called it like number ten in a series that didn't exist. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Oh, um, oh that's a good idea. I need to nick that. Something. Also, a uh, request: go back to um, Ultra Despair Girls. If everyone could just go tag it, uh, bear protagonist, please. Uh, go tag it, bear protagonist on Steam, bear so we can get into popular sure. tags. That would be great because there is a. It's actually a bear antagonist, but regardless of that, yeah. Uh, hashtag bear protagonist. So, okay, moving on. Next I, I up actually is Race know. for the Galaxy. It looks yes. like a card game. I actually know this. Oh, uh, I've, I've seen this one. Yep, this is yeah. a very popular card game i mm. own roll for the galaxy which was the dice version of it uh, but race for the galaxy extremely popular really really good competitive card game this is a pc implementation of that with two expansions gathering storm and rebel versus imperium there's a ios version of this as well which i think might be a little cheaper than the pc version but yeah race for the galaxy might be like is one of the best competitive in a box card games you can buy it's nice. really really good so I'm hoping the port is good as well, because a lot of these board game and card game ports end up being pretty rubbish. I'm hoping this isn't one of them. Hmm. Uh, next up, Princess Maker 3. It's, you know, another Princess Maker game where you that raise a princess and she might turn into an asshole or she might be awesome. Yeah, I wasn't aware that they were bringing out a three because didn't they just bring two out? Or am I thinking two was, something two else? Was a, two was a big shift. I, I'm more of a one guy myself, but I feel two kind of solidified some of the stuff I loved. Okay. And I'm interested to see what they do with three. Yeah, this seems like the sort of game mm -hmm. you'd want to stream, Dodger. <laughs> this seems like the kind of thing that you would... Uh... Either that or Mike is completely bullshitting me and it's just flying right completely away. Bullshitting God you. damn it. Definitely is. Bullshitting you. Yeah, no, it's but fine. Th this looks like a Two's dodger game. Two's actually my favorite. That's, yeah. Look at, look at this thing. Like, this, is this not a dodger game? You're not into this? Oh, no. It's... Yeah, yeah. You it's, are? Um, okay. It's very similar to Long Live the Queen in a lot of ways. Yes. Or Does it murder yeah. you quite as much as Long Live the Queen, though? Because that game was fucking nightmarishly hard. It's more just like, are you, is your princess going to come to you and be like, you're a terrible dad and I fucking hate you? <laughs> like, are your feelings going to get hurt in this game? Because maybe. All right. Because Fair you enough. play the dad, you're not like the princess. Well, yeah, yeah you're oh, the princess okay. maker. Yes, the maker of the princess. In a literal I guess sense. you are technically the maker of the princess. In, in, many, in many ways, yes, apparently so. Um, mm. All right, next up is the Drone Racing League High Voltage. Is this a free-to-play VR game? Uh, it's, actually, it's not know, VR. But it okay. has mixed reviews. <laughs> yep, not a great start. Early access. I, I mean, I could see why drone racing would be extremely fun to play if done mm. right. That's a nice uh, idea. I like yeah. that. Yeah. It is. A, I, I like to, there's a couple of plane racing games that I played that I really enjoyed mm. that were really fun. Uh, this, it's like, it looks like it could be a lot of fun, but only if you did it right. Uh, apparently, I guess they haven't done it right so far, but it is an early access, so perhaps that's something that they can resolve. That's a really good idea, though. 
Yeah. Someone needs to make a good version. Yeah, make I mean, these one. guys might be making it, but that's a really good idea. And then give them power ups. Every racer must have power ups. God damn it! You might. I want to be able to shoot over, down the other drones. Have a computer. Basically, I Let's want wipeout, but with drones flying. That's what oh, I want. Well, I'm a big wipeout fan, so yeah. like, I'd love that. Yeah. Get cold storage to do the soundtrack. I will buy a million copies. I will not. <laughs> but a I will million. Buy Let me just make at a note least of that. one copies. We'll, we'll, we'll put that into the uh, into the business plan. No, that's a good idea. Drone racing game. Yeah, like if that. you if you can license uh, Kenny Logan's Danger Zone as the only song in that game as well, I'd be okay with that. Someone on the dra on the chat just said Thomas was a drone. As far ah, as I'm concerned, we're making there it. We go. God, there we go. That's the game. Good. We've done it. Holy done it. hell! We have ended video games. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The next game is called Lil Blue Buddy. Um, okay. At first, it seemed like it was kind of a Tamagotchi ish game. Because uh -huh. it's like, choose your egg, and then it hatches into a buddy, and then you have to feed it. But I this don't know that ancient. the thing ever like turns into anything else. Also, according to this, it came out in 2016, so I have no idea what's on this goddamn list. Great. Um, <laughs> next up is Space Odyssey. Okay. Explore the sci-fi universe, y'all. I mean, it all, always sounds good. Uh, it's quite cheap. It's only a couple of dollars, which is nice. Ah. Yeah. I like the aesthetic of this. Look at this. Um, the the rings on the planets in particular. This looks gorgeous. Huh. It says it has pleasable mm. graphics. So is this Chinese dev? Because Chinese devs have the best Steam descriptions. Trust us. Every week we find a few Chinese dev games that are very yeah. badly translated descriptions, and they're just adorably bad. It's... This looks gorgeous. This looks though. nice. Look the shader works lovely. On oh this. yeah. The way the planets look is yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. Um, I think that. Oh, it says there's going to be VR support uh, available in July for this. Mm. I don't know. I think you just mostly fly around. I think it's kind of a Zen experience. Which you know what? I'm good with for a couple of dollars. That is. Lovely. Yeah, it looks like a lot of those kind of old sci-fi sci-fi book covers. Yeah, it does. That kind of nice yeah. faceted look. I love that. Looks really yeah. nice. That's cool. Hmm. Mm. All right, the next one is called Number 70, Eye of Basir. It comes out tomorrow, June 28th. It is a um, exploration investigation game, which I have been burned by before, so I'm not going to uh -huh. let myself get too excited we about it. We do get a lot of these every week, yes. I always get so excited, and then I play them, and I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> uh, some people are saying that they saw those assets for that Space Odyssey game before. Ah. Uh, oh god is that is really an asset flip that's so disappointing if that's true uh, can anyone link me to actual the actual proof of that yeah can you go can you actually prove me prove that that's true because I if don't it's the asset flip give me a second I'll yeah find it. oh you'll find it yeah um uh yeah this i as you said we get a few of these narratively driven first person exploration games every couple of weeks and a lot yeah. of them are bad so i'm hoping that that is not true um, the next game is called Gunball. Gunball. Uh, oh yeah, it's totally an asset flip. Sorry. Yeah. Oh god. Oh, Who, that's too bad. Fuck. That's that made me lose all faith in humanity. I, why was, I might, just I might now? Flip it myself. Why was I being nice? This is what happens when I'm being nice. God fucking damn it! Can't believe oh, that. that. Looks, it looks gorgeous. That's worth making a good game with those assets. Yeah that's hmm. uh, it's kind of a shame that someone even made assets with it well what would the thing is is it it's not an asset flip unless there was an original game like of course so you're that's what to i'm looking assets. for now is if yeah it, what because you're absolutely right like if it's just the look if this um, is the first game to actually use those assets that's not an asset flip you are you are allowed to buy assets and make games out of them that's what they're for that's fair that's fair um i just i need to know if there is another one because if this is actually like as it was as just we kind of we're going to move on in a minute but because asset flip mm. has become such a common phrase and going yeah. around and looking around and accusing people of it has actually become so common it's getting to the point where if anyone ever uses unity assets in the game they get accused of being an asset flipper which is not true because mm. if you bought them mm. in good faith and then used them in the game you're licensed to do that like that's what it's for for sure, right. for sure. It looks like there's some gameplay logic built in into this, but you're right, it might exist in a gray area. It's certainly a beautiful asset, and I hope they've made a cool game with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I would, 
So fair enough. Yeah, no, yeah. you're absolutely right. And you even if you're not the sec- only the second person to use it, and the, right, let me say, an asset flip is where you take a pre-made pack of assets, which is usually already a game like Unit Z, and all you mm-hmm. do is you either make minor modifications and re-upload the thing with a different name on to the Steam store. That is what an asset flip is. Using Unity assets legitimately bought from the store is not an asset flip. Well, I'll, I'll say this. I mean, every game I've made since assets were a thing has unity assets in it mm-hmm. um you can use them consistently like volume all of well with the vast majority of volumes animations were bought as assets like i didn't mo- do the mocap myself i bought mocap data um there are ways of doing it in a way that you know you as a player you don't even know it's it's being done yeah. and it's a great way of kind of spreading the cost of game development as long as you do something unique with them it looks like this one there might be some game code yeah maybe of, maybe not yeah because uh, yeah. there are some people saying that you know it was pretty identical to a demo and so forth so yes it may be an asset flip but let's just not be so trigger happy with these accusations like yeah. there is it seems like there's a roving gang of people going around harassing devs on the basis of perceived slights and i don't think that's cool and we should stop it totally mm. agreed yeah anyway yeah so apologies for that uh gunball uh this looks like crap <laughs> you, one... shoot, you shoot balls at stuff yeah it's it's, it's just vr it's a vr you shoot balls at stuff yeah, okay, yep. cool. The end. Next yeah. up is Ticket to this, Earth. This, on the other hand, is not crap, um, which it's kind of weird that it came out, as you said, this week because it may fly right under the radar. When we were talking about good iOS games, this is yeah, a very, very good iOS game. Yeah, it came out on mobile It's really fun. Yes. This, it, it, basically, this is an unusual game because it's kind of a turn-based tactics game, but with a mm-hmm. puzzle element mixed in where you have to move on a path around the same colored... Uh, blocks and squares to power up your attacks it's a very mm. interesting game it's it's episodic and there's a lot of content in the box uh originally but yeah there's going to be doing episodes of this thing and mm-hmm. the art style is great it's a lot of fun it's strategic it's unique uh, this is something if it's at the right price anyway i would strongly recommend uh on ios or on pc it's a very very good video game mm. yeah uh, next up is the digital version of Lost Cities, which is a card game. Hmm. Haven't heard of that one particularly, but I like card games. There's also a demo available for it as well. Oh, it's by Rainer Gnizia, who's like one of the best designers in the world. So it's probably quite okay. good. Well, there yeah. you go. <laughs> uh, he's, he's a storied, uh, storied game designer. Like he's made a lot of incredible games for uh, on board games anyway. All right, moving on. Next up is Persian Knights Sands of Wonders. Persian Knights Sands of um, Wonders. Which looks like, you know, a, a pretty straightforward go to this area, go to this area kind of point and click game. Save Persia okay. from Mysterious Plague is the description. Mm. Cool. Uh, some nice <laughs> a Mysterious art, Plague but... or just Mysterious Plague? Yeah, just it, Mysterious it's... Plague. Save it's them a, it's from Mysterious Plague. Game. It's a hidden object <laughs> game. You can see by the screenshots. Nice art, though. I'll give them that for that. Right. No, I, I don't. I don't think it's a hidden object game. I think that the, that's like your inventory. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it may be now both because I know my wife's been playing a few. That was like this has hidden object and also point and click elements. Right. So, yeah. Right. Cool. Um. Ne- next up is Space Hit. On Space Hit, you've finished your space mission and it's just time to come back home. But your journey will not be so easy as you think. Dot dot dot. <laughs> and I'm yep. looking at this. I'm like, cool. Next. <laughs> Next up is Micro yeah. Machines World Series. Fucking new hey. Micro Machines game. Are you kidding me? I hope you don't suck because the games on the Mega Drive were amazing. And this doesn't look too bad. This looks like the originals with the really slidey physics and mm. you can put guns on the top of the things. Look at this shit. This is awesome. You can put guns on the top of the things. <laughs> it, that's going to be a box quote right now. You can put yeah. guns on the top of the things. Total biscuit, the cynical Brit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I issue official permission to the devs to use that quote, by the way. Mm. You can put guns on the top of things. This actually looks really good. I hope it's as good as it looks. I think the console version might be being done by the studio who did the console versions of uh, Volume, I think. Cool. Why do so you keep doing this? Because you're very good at marketing. Yes. No, that wasn't so. That wasn't the plug. I, know, that I wasn't don't believe plug. you. That was a genuine. No. Respecting the good people at Just Add Water. I apologize. Awesome. <laughs> As next one. Here we go. Well, next one is called Zombie Hobby VR. Oh and it's a game God. where zombie it's a hobby. VR game 
where you just pick up things in a room and throw them at zombies. The most affordable objects from your daily life, throw them at zombies and aliens. VR was built for this. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty... You literally was... just chuck shit at VR people. So. I like I like what they've done with the look of it, though. It's got a not yeah. nice... It's been thought out a bit. That's yes. Nice. Yeah, it, it doesn't look like they just threw this away. And some of the yeah. animation and movement's actually quite smooth, so uh, mm. all credit to them for that. But that yeah. is definitely inspired by Super Hot, and there is no avoiding that. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, next up is Hartacon Tactics. Let's go the word Looks tactics. It's like a strategy RPG. Turn-based tactical RPG featuring Higley deterministic mechanics. Yeah, I want to do the spell mm. check on that. But I got to admit, the art looks good. Uh, this actually looks like a game that would be right up my alley. Uh, looks like a mm. classic uh, tactics Fire Emblem Moga battle kind of thing, which I'm into. Um, next game is an RTS called King of the World. Really. It doesn't look particularly interesting to me, but that is not my shtick, so... The gameplay from Risk in a real-time strategy setting. Fight for... Oh, interesting. Yeah, so this has existed for a very long time in Warcraft 3 and the original StarCraft, mm. the Risk okay. mods. StarCraft 2 has a bunch of them, too. It looks like someone's taken them and actually tried to make a standalone game out of them. So it's kind of 12-player right. backstab. I mean, they're actually very popular and quite fun. If it's a good implementation, mm. that's great. But you can play it for absolutely free by just downloading the StarCraft Starter Edition. So they're going to have to do well, some more go. to impress people on that, I think. Next up is called Block Rocking Beats. Oh, uh, that's a good name. It is. This is a VR game, I'm pretty sure. VR play, yeah, yeah. VR music studio uh, with up to three other players in a virtual band. That's cool. Hope it doesn't suck. That yeah. sounds really entertaining. <laughs> oh my God. What the fuck is this <laughs> game? Next game is called House Party. Okay. It's a throwback to the adventure style games of the 80s and 90s, like Leisure Suit Larry and Monkey Island, but rendered in oh full 3D. Oh my god, first that is person. horrific. Jesus Christ, that's horrible. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, this is creepy as fuck. Look at their faces. It looks like The Sims. Look at their dead eyes. I'm it so does... confused. Yeah, yeah, they have dead eyes full on. Oh my. Okay. Yeah, next. <laughs> next Your is game called, went out uh, yeah. <laughs> Next is called Five Star Rio Resort. Uh, um, puzzle game, looks like. Yep. Yep. Puzzle ish. Uh, well, it's just all, lots all of different it. games inside of it, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Actually, is what it is. Yep. Next up is Panzer Killer. Killing Panzers, one assumes. Mm. The highly appraised sequel to Tiger Hunt. This is from 2007. Fuck it. Next. Great. Next up is Zombie Solitaire Not two. even going. <laughs> zombie no, Solitaire. No, I'm not even going to give it the time of day. Next. It's literally solitaire. Okay, of course next it is. Uh, is Dig a Boo. Dig a Boo. A tomb exploration game. Again, it's another Chinese developed game. The, the description makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> I, I, cool. And I don't... I'm trying to look at the gameplay and trying to figure out what it is. I couldn't... I mean, there's digging. There is digging. Hmm. I don't know. All right. Next game is called Uninvited. Um, it says it's a strategic timing game from the from the pictures <clears throat> from the the screenshots. It looks like one of those games where you can see how far the enemies can see, and you try to like scooch around them, mm. like some that sort kind of, of stealth thing. game, for instance. Oh yeah, maybe. God, can you imagine if there was one of those on sale? Yeah. Oh, I'd, I'd play the hell out of that. If I could find one on Steam, I mean. God damn it. <laughs> Next if up I'm is called... If I'm past them, I'll take them. Yeah. This is why I don't invite devs on the show. Next. Next up is called Distant Nightmare. Uh, it's another first person. Everything is very, very dark. What the hell is this texture quality? But for some reason, you can unlock new pedal bikes. Mm, good. It's all, the combination of horror and pedal bikes. God, I, that's what ride I'm with for. Satan. Um, oh God, this is that you can ride a goat Satan. <laughs> just... Yes. Next up is called Salig. S A E L I G. Salig. Uh, I wonder mm. what that translates into. Strategy role playing simulation trading game. About it's... the things oh, that right. matter. It's Everything I like. Okay. Okay. The Dark Ages is harsh, but you're alive and determined to prosper. Uh, also, there's someone playing a loot for some reason. Seems like it's a, it's an early access survival game again. Uh, very ambitious. Most of these games don't get finished. I think we've seen this one before. Del, Del Segno. Segno. Uh, 
I mean, pretty sure we've seen this game. I can't before. tell the difference between an one anime boob for another anime boob. So I, know. I know. As a person who has a highly trained moe anime girl <laughs> eye, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've seen these moe anime girls before. Yes. So Next. the game after that is called Radioactive. First person open world zombie survival game, HD vibe, HC vibe, and uh, Oculus Rift. Huge explore VR world. Needless to say, it is in early access. So yeah. Great. Next up is called Inferno Puzzle. Right. Which is a That's quite really logo. simple looking puzzle game. Simple low poly puzzle game with challenging, challenging levels and a dark theme. Oh dear. Uh, no. Yeah, next. Um, next up is Infinimath. Oh god, that sounds math fun. Puzzle. Thank god. Uh, finally. Ready to release. Easy to customize. Simple ads integration. What? Why is that <laughs> in the trailer? All right. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, the game after that is called Beans, the Coffee Shop Simulator. Pfft, there you go. There's your stream for you. There's even I an know. OST. Right. You this, run a coffee so that, shop. That InfiniMath has got to be like an asset flip, right? That's got to be the advert for the assets. That's uh, why we have the like ads that. Thing. Yeah. Uh, this looks, it's a sardonic tycoon simulator in quotes about hipsters running a coffee shop with dismal puns, coffee chip tunes, and mystery. That actually looks pretty fun. Yeah. I've it's like Prison Architect. That. Yeah. Yeah. That looks pretty neat. And lastly, on July the 3rd, we have... E Equivoke? Uh, yeah, I guess. E Equivoque? Story forward, uh, visual novelette, whatever that means. About a young apprentice who is thrust into a conflict between two magicians. Indeed. Uh, by Jenny B, whoever that might be. Interesting art style on that one. <laughs> yeah, like I like the art style of it. Little uh, next games. up is Escape from Biostation. Do I wish to escape from Biostation? I don't know, do you? I mean, the, the logo's got an elephant and a hat in it, so I'm not sure if I do. Uh, take the role of Rob, Rob, Rob Bot. God, kill me. Armed with your deadly super squirrel, you'll explore and uncover the secret of the bio station, apparently. I don't, I no longer want to uncover the secret of the bio station. And finally, Earthquake Simulator VR. Which we saw last <laughs> week. Yeah. Which actually and has the potential it. to be good. Right, that's it. That's the releases. Those are the ones brave enough. Basically, buy Ticket to Earth and possibly Micro Machines, I think, is our takeaway from this. And definitely not Thomas Was Alone or Volume that is totally not on sale right now on the Steam. Are so. they? Okay, I, cool. I don't think they that's are, good. actually. I've been told no, they're, they're not. They're not. No, we've, we've taken them off specifically to troll your yeah, audience. They're, yeah, mm, to make sure that doesn't there. happen. <laughs> All right. We are now running over time. This has been a very silly show, but we'd really like to thank uh, Mr. Mike Bethel for coming on the show and being such an entertaining guest. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, thanks to Dodger for coming on, despite doing a 24 fucking hour stream. And then I'm so awake. Showing, yes, you don't look like that at all. I, <laughs> I don't believe you at the moment. This has been the co Podcast. Thank you very much for watching. Next week, July the 4th, Independence Day, we bring on Yahtzee once again for a wonderful, sarcastic show. That will be good. I'm looking forward mm. to it very, very much indeed. America and so forth. Thanks for watching, folks. Thank you very much if you happen to subscribe during the show. And a quick reminder, if you subscribe via Twitch Prime, it doesn't order in you. So maybe click the subscribe button again if you feel like it. We'd very much appreciate that. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Goodbye. Bye.